We'll do it live. Crazy whiskey. Get in, sit down, buckle up. Crazy whiskey. Get in, sit down, buckle up. Crazy whiskey. Welcome back to Cruising with Steak. Here we are, guys. Another Tuesday night, hanging out, Gramerica FM. We got we got James Cruz with us. Ta-da! Yo. We got Jerry Cthulhu with us. Yo yo. And we got Adam Loyal from Cat in the Box with us. So a pomi. And it's uh yeah here we are, hanging out. Chilling out, Max, and relaxing all cool. I think I used that line quite a bit. <laughs> it was last week. Dude. Yeah, I, I think I think I used that exact line. It's because I'm now just we're an just AI. a couple of guys that are up to no good. Yeah, start making trouble in the neighborhood. Man, just complicated yeah. AI. So what's new, guys? Anything new and exciting? Anything cool happened this week? Newsworthy, hmm. noteworthy? In your hmm. lives? No. <laughs> no. All right. Pretty boring. I made it like really far in the Red Dead too. Oh, uh, there you go, James. I mean, I'm, I'm, man. I watched the Red Dead Two South Park episode. Oh, did that they was make a great one? one. Yes, they did. Yes, oh, they did. God. Yes, they I started did. binge watching the Arrow. That's a, oh man, the you're first few are awesome. Man, you're all on those DCWB series, Jerry. You're gonna like it. You no, know, they're surprisingly well. Arrow's Arrow was Flash, or but, CW, not WB yeah. anymore. It was WB like in the nineties. <laughs> Flash was really good, like the yeah. first four seasons. Really, Same really, with Arrow. Yeah, or, yeah, it was interesting, but it's like it's very formulaic. I mean, the, the three quarters when the show's like three quarters over, there's a giant fight scene every show. Every show. Yeah, there's like a mass fight scene, and it's all orchestra. You know, it's like. Comic book fights, right. yeah, the obligatory right. violence, and you know it's a third <laughs> act. It's like oh, it's the end of the third act, and then they they conclude. Yeah. So, other speed than force, that, the speed demon, yeah, all that shit. Like, other than that, I'm just finding it very esoteric. The whole story arc, hmm. which is a whole topic for another show, but yeah, it's been interesting. Not bad. I finished uh, watching uh, Naruto Shippuden finally, and uh, now I'm, I've finally. moved on. I've moved on. Yeah, dude. All three thousand like, episodes. No, nah, it's only like four hundred. But uh, oh, dude, they're only like eighteen minute episodes. And now I've moved on oh, to uh, Seven Deadly Sins, well, the show James Cruz was talking about, and I am not disappointed. I just started season two today. Yeah, dude, it's it's great. Did you do Hero Mask? No, I, I done Hero started Mask. Hero Mask, but I haven't really delved into it. I like I just try to get a glimpse of what what I have like you know in in the pipe, and uh, before I finish James, the bowl, you James, know, hold like, on a I second. Just gotta, we just got yeah. an amazing mustache that joined the chats right now. Uh, Watcher, <laughs> welcome. Yeah. Who, who? What's what's happening? Who? Who is this? What is Crypto Mystic? Crypto Mystic. Welcome to the it's show, the Watcher. He can't hear us. No, I'm, oh. I'm seeing this. I yeah, so he looks just like this dude in this other group that I go into chat with, and his guy, his name is Star Walker. Oh, this man. Other guy. But he was like, I don't know, some kind of spat. Is it uh, impersonators from Back to the Future 3? <laughs> no, but when the first time I saw this guy, I'm like, no, wait a minute. That's not, that's what I thought maybe it was him, but he changed his name, whatever. This is making Had sense. This is making a bunch of sense because uh, it was it was like midnight or something one night. I woke up the next morning and checked my emails, and I was like, "Who is this guy Watcher that keeps joining my Zoom room like three times in a row?" And I was like, "What's going on?" <laughs> I was like, "I don't know this guy." And it's all making sense. Now, now makes, you do. Now I do. Meeting of the minds. That's what Cruising with Steak is. <laughs> we blend ideas. So while you know he's getting his auto audio going, I think he's got Tourette's. He keeps waving his arm like this. He, it's I think he's testing a mic. It's possible. Oh, okay. It's a snap test on a mic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but seven deadly sins. Uh, well, we'll reach around to that. Yeah, that's fucking great, James. Great recommendation. Thank you. Yep. Uh, yeah. I'm, and then what was the one that you talked about? Nar- Hero What's mask. That? Oh yeah, Naruto. Hero mask. Yeah, Hero mask. I gotta check that out. I'm watching. 
my god there's so many of these shows dude uh, i've started watching uh deep space nine season one like excellent. seven episodes in i think that's on um everything prime? i think i think it's on, it's on yeah. yeah it's on hulu and prime right now yeah why don't you watch the expanse it's way better fuck yeah it is expanse. oh it's so good have. I don't you know. Guys, can you hear me? Oh, there you are. There. Ah, right on. The mustache speaks. Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, man, a beautiful mustache just joined the chat, so I don't know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh I thought know. maybe it's like Eric's little brother. We'll do introductions here, Crypto Mystic, correct? I'm Grimstake. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how's it going, man? James. Hi. James. <laughs> we got Adam over there. You know me. And Jerry. Nice to meet you, man. Welcome to Cruising with Steak. We're live right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what were we talking about? TV shows. The Expanse. Hero Mask. Hero Mask. Expanse over Deep Space Nine, which really isn't a hard one. Deep Space Nine is... Lame. It's space opera. It's, it's one of the most boring shows ever it's made. It's space great opera. for throwing up when you're doing something else. <laughs> the expanse of space opera with violence and sex. Okay. <laughs> Man, that's kind of like uh the magicians, all those witches who are just all they're all just fucking each other. Like yeah, what was who's it? Vanessa talking about um Yeah, she said she season? said something, but then she never answered anybody. I think she meant maybe season three no. that she was yeah, watching on I Netflix. Because I was like, wait oh, a minute, how are you what? watching uh the magicians? Season four comes out. Oh yeah, they a just weeks. full of them just banging each other. Yeah. But season no, but season three Netflix just released. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we think that's what she was talking about. Yeah. But we saw season three. Yeah. Already waiting As for when, four to when come. it was when, when it ended yeah, when, yeah, yeah, when it was airing yeah week to week week to uh, week just man. like counterpart had some news topics to bring hey how about this Gillette ad and toxic masculinity dude <laughs> I, I saw the Twitter thing I I, I, just, I, I, I wish yeah. I'd known this was coming out because that's when you buy Dollar Shave Club stock right I, yeah I was like there's, there's a certain segment that they're just gonna push straight away like who who's your market that you're trying to grab. Like Who almost knows? all women. Okay. Well, and feminists that. don't shave. And then just think about <laughs> all the people that you're just flushing down the toilet. Man, oh, that's yeah. so good. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Drop your Procter and Gamble stock. It's probably it's probably getting crushed right now. Let's just but swap. hey, if there's a story to be told, it's like Nike, where everybody was burning their yeah. Nikes and their stocks were like up twenty percent the following week. All news is good news. Uh, exactly. Well, it's just the identity. Except identity unless you're politics. Trump. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh man, that fast food shit was so great. I did I mean, love how. Yeah. I've been eating those pictures up all day. <laughs> it's just the, the way that he's getting crucified for it is even better though. Wait, what happened? Great. Uh, dude, the, uh, what was it? The, was it the college uh, champions or some, something? Some or? kind of some kind Clemson of thing at the National. White House and McDonald's yeah. catered it. Uh, well, yeah, because of uh, the furlough going on. <laughs> There's no no cooks in the White House and uh, national champions uh, for football, uh, Clemson. They brought yeah, them in and wine and dine them with Wendy's and Mickey D's and uh, <laughs> some salads and bowls can, of ranch and barbecue sauce. I, I can have two Big Macs. <laughs> I'll take two Big Macs, sir. Dude, that had to be awful, though. That's because, hysterical. I imagine when you're getting off of like Air Force One instead of getting like a lapel pin and like a bag full of goodies, they're just giving you like single stationary yeah. sheets <laughs> and Happy Meals. <laughs> but dude, like once once fast food gets cold, it's shit, and you know that stuff sitting out. Like, <laughs> come on, <laughs> that had and to be awful. Some, like Burger King, not Burger King, but some of them. No, it all makes sense now. I understand what Obama was doing with the thirty thousand dollars worth of hot, hot dogs, dogs and oh. pizza. <laughs> Just feeding everybody. Man, he was. It makes sense. <laughs> that doesn't it, make sense. It wasn't pedo. Yeah, it does. He he was having illicit relationships with underage basketball players, and that's how he was paying them off in cheap shitty See, food. It's like illegal to have ex, ex you know ex white uh, ex food external to the White House brought in. You know, it's like not allowed. Well, yeah, because couldn't anybody poison that shit? Like if it is. Tried. See, here's what's weird: when the president goes out. On like when they're traveling, one of the things that they have to do is Secret Service, whoever has a certain amount of people that go and buy things from stores at random from surrounding areas so that the ability for somebody to try to spike the food supply is drastically reduced. 
Mm. So mm. I'm assuming it would probably be one of those. If they're going to do it, they would send Secret Service out. Hey, go buy McDonald's food, but you know which McDonald's. So where did they get the sixty-five thousand dollars in hot dogs and pizza from individually? You'd <laughs> shipped them in from Chicago. <laughs> I know, but that means <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Yes, we all know what it means, Chair. Come wink, on, wink, nod, wink, nod. wink, and nudge, nudge. Say no, say no more. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Some other news headlines here. There, there, uh, there you go. Cruising with steak. First headline out of the box. Pizza gate. Yeah. Well, we kind right. of transition from toxic masculinity and the Gillette. Yeah. Uh, the into Gillette Trump ad. and then into pizza gate. Yeah. Well, here we go. Uh, Infowars <laughs> is going to be on Roku now. Really? Nice. Yeah. Well, good for Roku. I'm yeah. surprised they're not there already because Roku was pretty open. You could Dude, even create Roku private hidden amazing. screens yeah. with porn and everything else. You, and I yep. never saw Alex Jones on there in the past. No, but I, I think I'm pretty sure there's an Infowars channel that you can, you can add. But I yeah. think this is some kind of sponsored thing. I don't know. I didn't read it. I didn't read the headline. So that's an interesting move. It's a good move mm-hmm. for Roku, probably. The yeah. story. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. And their stock's been going up since. Dude, Roku since, is a solid product. I love my Roku. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, get two of them that are back to back against the wall, and you'll see how much fun they are when you have your remotes fighting each other. Oh, that's ah, suck. nice. Yeah. Uh, Man, so in uh, in other clickbait headlines, uh, there is first a, person problems when both of my TVs yes, up against first, the same walls in world different rooms problems. wirelessly <laughs> won't communicate properly with each other. <laughs> Correct. Fuck this life. <laughs> oh, exactly. Like people problems, dude. Uh, there's a meme in there somewhere. Oh yeah. The uh, there's the first uh, flat Earth cruise just got announced. It says awesome. a cruise a cruise dedicated to the controversial flat earth conspiracy theory has been announced for 2020 and the ambitious event ambitious event is already drawing snickers from skeptics blah 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 uh unfortunately for flat earth fans however the concept of having a convention aboard a cruise ship has led to the conspiracy theory once again becoming subject of ridicule there's nothing good in this article they're just talking shit about these flat earthers what are oh, they doing? Are, do they have an experiment that they're functionally being able to put into place and they need the open expanse of water to do so? Or no, are they no, hoping no, to no, sail no. off the end? Neither. It's This is just a pleasure cruise. And all I'm going to say is if you're a single guy, you get lots of ass on it. Yeah, it's I was going to say all maybe flat, flat earth pussy. girls are like really no. uh, they're not necess- they, they are. Well, they. I think a lot of them have like turn their back against Christianity or, you know, whatever their church is because they've turned away against everything. So they throw caution. Well, everything's noise. a lie. Yeah. So let's just go out yeah, and right, just hedonism. Right. I need to fuck as much as possible. Yes. Hedonism on the flat earth cruise. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, what's happening. You know what? The cruise I want to go on is that MJ's cruise, the uh, paranormal one. Oh yeah, that'd be yeah, dude. That thing's for like two weeks. Like it goes for a long time. <laughs> yeah, we go up this coast and down this coast yeah. and around this island. And they go yeah, to all it starts the, in yeah. Venice. Yeah, and you get to go to like haunted mm-hmm. ancient Ven- Venetian places. That would be cool. Bitching. That would be pretty cool. Man, I wouldn't mind spending a, a week with Micah Hanks either on his ancient aliens cruise. Ah, oh, dude, yeah. He'd, he'd definitely carry the conversation, that's for sure. But then you'd have to put up with alien talk all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> no, with my, when you get Micah Hanks, uh, uh, you could Micah spend. Hanks in person, he's he's so much deeper. Deep. That's a compliment, not a knockdown. <laughs> hey, if he can take it. In other clickbait headlines, uh, Teen Rex car during Bird Box Challenge. So apparently a 17-year-old girl in Utah thought that she could drive blindfolded in a bird box challenge and uh, <laughs> smashed into the truck. No fatalities or anything. But Yeah, yeah I, is, I loved when that at. whole Drake video started happening. You get all the people running next to their cars and crashing them. It was a, another uh, <laughs> oh, repeat yeah, yeah. of that <laughs> yes. ghosting wave that happened like 10 years ago where it's like, dude, you're standing on top of the truck and I see the light pole coming. <laughs> man, it's just ridiculous, man. I thought you said T-Rex car and, I, and it reminded me, I did go to uh, the monster truck show over the weekend in Hell downtown. Yeah, you did, James. You posted yeah. a ton of pictures too. <laughs> and they had a, uh, it, basically it was like a, a, like a military style, like tank treaded vehicle that come out. And it's like an APC, so like a, um, like a troop carrier, and then like the top opens up, and then like this fucking T Rex comes out with its like, 
claw hands, and then it picks up a Honda Civic and just starts eating it. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man. But yeah, they had like six monster That's trucks and some freestyle motocross guys. It's a, yeah. It was pretty cool. Nice. Well, we're still uh, early in the podcast and before people probably have turned off because they hate it yet. Um, I want to say, Adam, Cat in the Box has been amazing lately. Like, dude, you guys took this show and it's it, you condensed it down. There's like it's highly edited. The audio quality is amazing. Oh, the, that's that's all Justin. Dude, Justin, he's, an insane he's doing madman. Magic on that, man. That. It sounds so good. So good. Like it's like Editor it's finely edited, man. It's crazy. Well, like, we so, record each of our channels on a separate recorder, or he pipes into a separate uh, computer, uses Audacity, I think. I record mm-hmm. on my Roland, then we pipe them together at the end, and he edits all of his card shuffles and stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's it's crazy. There's like no pauses. There's no. There's none of that old friends to know charm of the rawness, but it's it's like it's it's a well polished fucking podcast, and everybody should subscribe. Cat in the Box remote viewing. That's right, check and all you need to come to the show is check the show notes there, so you can do a remote viewing on your own. You can always send an email to us. Everything's on catinthebox.space, but most importantly, bring a deck of cards. It's true. <laughs> it's lots of card playing going on or drawing cards. And when you and yeah. Justin somehow draw the same card, like that's that's happened like twice. That should it's so I love I love your reaction. This, this, this no, this is fun. This is this is cool because I've been really getting into like morphic resonance and you know magic. So you have like Gordon White, he's got this theory of you're gonna do one sigil. Well, do a dozen other sigils with it that are things you know you're gonna come true. So if you know every Friday you have lasagna you know, put your sigil out there that, you know, you're going to have lasagna on Friday. And the idea that kind of like fish school together, that you can get your sigil to school. And so I've kind of thought about this in, okay, well, if we're doing remote viewing, which could be a synchronicity in ways that, you know, you're, you're guessing things and they're lining up. And sometimes Justin's guess and my guess will both be off, but we're drawing similar pictures. And so I'm like, okay, well, let me try to lay out as many random situations and possibilities so that if we're hitting on one thing, maybe these other random things can start hitting. And mm-hmm. that's where it's been fun because statistically, I don't know what the, the numbers are. It's really high. If you take a deck of cards, shuffle it. I take a deck of cards, shuffle it. We each pull out a deck, pull out one card. What are the chances <laughs> that we're both going to pull out the exact same card? It's pretty low. And we've uh. done it now, I think, three times on the show 2.5 percent of 2.5 percent it's pretty low yeah that's so (laughs) yeah out of like 22 and so it's just it's little little things like that plus drawing the same stuff plus i don't know it's it's been a blast well that's the shit that that that's what interests me is when you guys are both remote viewing a target and neither of you are really on it but you have the same visions like the two of you see the same kind of thing but it's it's weird like like that's that's the shit that's crazy like it's you're picking up on the same thing but it's not what it is but it's something else like who knows <laughs> you know what i'm gonna transfer here in a few minutes i will send you guys a picture in the chats of one of my my favorite hits and essentially <sighs> One of the things that I did in this drawing is I had Angie draw on the back of deck of cards, just a bunch of symbols, names, numbers, anything that, that and I wouldn't know about. I said, just do this, you know, and I'm going to guess these on the, the podcast instead of, instead of just having a deck of cards at that time, I'd have this special deck that she made. And I hadn't looked at any of the pictures before she gives me two cards uh, or I, I, I pull off two cards. Um, when we do the guessing thing, after we've done a remote viewing, One of them is a picture of a sun and one of them is a picture of this face that has like this round halo above it. And it turns out that, you know, with the remote, you know what, I'm going to pull the picture. I'm doing a bad job of describing it. The card photos matched both of the items that we drew from the remote viewing together. And it was such an incredible, crazy amount of, her doing something the day before, having matched the two packages that Justin and I send at the exact same time, 
having matched the two cards that I pulled. The first one I pulled because it was the one that I said, I have a feeling about the next one. Let me just look at it. And it turns out that both of those described the package and the look. And, and when you start having those types of things happen to such an intricate like flavor, you go, I don't know what's going on here, but it's it's explaining to me some functional underlaying of how things work. And so it just gets me having fun playing with it to yeah. try to, I don't know, it's like a particle accelerator, right? Like we're throwing ideas and just watching like, them we smash can't, and uh, trying to see what comes we can't, out. We can't hear you, Crypto Mystic, if you're talking. All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you got to get yeah. up in that mic. All right. Yeah, I got to get close. Oh, uh, I'm just asking, were you into remote viewing before, Adam, or is this uh, an experiment that you started with the podcast? No, this is uh, started with Justin. He got really interested in doing it, decided uh, to bring it into a couple of episodes on Cat in the Box. And after we did it like three or four times and it had some really good success, we turned it into a whole podcast on its own. Ah, oh, sweet. Yeah. In fact, we did one one night that was another amazing hit and it had... Three the of the guys, diamond, the black, yeah, diamond, the black diamond. Yeah. James Cruz, <laughs> yeah. Jerry. Um, we had four people on the podcast, two people who'd never remote viewed before. And every single person had a solid hit. I didn't even know the target. Yeah. That was the most, <laughs> impressive. but dude, that was awesome. That taught me like it, it, like it opens up layers of what is possible in, you know, mm -hmm. in Man. magic. Yeah, that's schooling sigils. I like that. Just getting, you know, that's that's uh I I I I saw someone putting up tips about sigils and it will, the one that I found interesting was to draw them with your foundation and if you're a woman or if you wear makeup, to draw sigils under your makeup oh. and foundation. Dude, I was thinking about today if there's something about the the tags on the inside of clothes, they have the little symbols. Mm -hmm. with uh the types of laundry codes and how you're supposed to do things and that's like a symbol that's on everybody's clothing you know what's on everybody's food just about <laughs> barcodes kosher symbol oh i never thought about that hmm. interesting well i mean that's basically all a brand and a logo is it's just a sigil and we all put energy in it they're little right. jingles and, and everything it's just magic right yep. so yep. like tied Tide pods. They taste good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just reading an article like you're talking about the bird box thing and now YouTube has all these guidelines for putting up these crazy videos all the time because of the bird box challenge. Well, I they, think they, they, uh, the company revealed new po policies that uh, creators must follow when they're uploading our content. And one of the biggest changes in a section dedicated entirely to dangerous pranks so like the YouTube uh, previously addressed pranks and it's harmful and dangerous content category uh, overall uh, of its overall policies. But it seems to added some new sections following the disturbing bird box challenge videos. Uh, the creators have a history of participating in dangerous challenges. Uh, Jake Paul driving blind. Oh, that's Jake Paul. Okay, this, he's a YouTube guy. A, I think he's like a twenty-something-year-old kid. Yeah, kind of like the, a, he's the a kid that. Kind of. Oh no, he is. He wasn't the kid in the forest, was he? In the suicide forest in Japan. Jake Paul, that's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, suicide forest thing. Yeah, uh, driving blindfolded to participate in the uh, bird box challenge. Teens eating poisonous Tide pods. There you go. And uh, even uh, some creators alluding to drugging their girlfriends on camera with natural sexual enhancement pills, all in the name of content. I'd never, i right. never heard of that one. You know, that's that's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so that's that's fucked up. Holy shit. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. So they're just a whole new guidelines to all that of course so three strikes in 90 days you'll be terminated termed termed term mm. limits what service was that youtube oh, they're nazis anyway yeah they are. <laughs> they're not just a matter of time oh, before they're gone yeah there was another Something else replaces it yeah it's kind of funny yeah the same thing uh I was gonna. I was gonna. We're in the, in the tech news segment, so 
We should talk about uh, InQtel. What's InQtel? I posted a photo, by the way, in the remote <clears throat> viewing of that uh, that hit there for you guys. It's way easier to see it in description. Oh, in the Zoom chats? Sweet. What are we looking at here? So to go back to the description, the one that I did is I, this one, here's how it turned out. I, what I sent Justin on this was a audio file um, that I created a story about a guy who um, was a stunt car driver, kind of like drive style during the day. He got burned in a car accident, could no longer work because of his sweat glands. So he had to start running drugs at night. And during all this, he ended up driving past like Area 52 uh, stealing some alien stuff, finding a transmitter, going and finding their UFO, hopping in it and flying like months into space, not being able to figure out what to do and then flying into the center of the sun and getting disintegrated. And so this guy was driving a DeLorean. And then so Justin, for his things, he draws a spun, a sun, he draws like spokes, which if you look at the spokes on like a DeLorean wheel, it looks exactly like, like that classic like sun spiral. And then the one thing that I drew is I kept saying that I kept seeing like Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> and so it had like this, the top of this wizard little candle holder that Justin gave me that was a target had this blue hat that was swooped back just like the top of Sonic does. Oh, yeah. And so then it's like, okay, well, how do our targets match up? You know, then the two cards that I drew from Angie, the one is this bearded looking guy with a smile that instead of having the like, the little candle cup tray like in front of it it's like above his head in a halo and then the other card that i picked was the sun and so like all those things happened at once together and it was like okay like <laughs> everything fits so that as soon as that happened with all that i'm like yeah from now on i'm trying to lay out as many landmine hidden around trying to see what's going to pop and go off yeah. other places the universe is crazy Fuck yeah <laughs> man it just goes to show how malleable it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, why the occult? Placebo? Why the occult became the occult? They didn't want us to know that we can control this <laughs> kind of stuff. Placebo is uncontrolled magic. Yeah. And then there's a reason why doctors wear coats, wear an outfit, have a command, enforce that placebo. It's no stranger that uh, the the most effective surgery for you is going to be the one that you believe in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Man. So you guys want to talk about uh, D-Wave and D-Wave <laughs> demons? <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about the time demon in, uh, in Flash, in the show The Flash, and how yeah. that relates to quantum computing. I like that. Yeah. So quantum computing, it's basically from my two minutes of Googling quantum computing, it's pretty much these computers that work off of qubits, is it? And these qubits harness qubits are quant quantum bits, quantum bits. They harness energy from alternate dimensions. Almost. Is allegedly. that what it, allegedly? The, the core, the whatever is in inside that thing, I've never seen any kind of public schematics of what's inside a qubit, but somehow they are quantum entangled to a device, a similar device in alternate dimensions. That's their. Dude, when I think about this shit, it's like the conspiracy theorists don't seem so crazy. Like if we're fucking around with space time and like and, and crazy dimensions, like things are weird right now. And there could be a reason for all this weirdness. I don't know. Well, they've always Dude, been this weird. Man, here, here's the, the, the idea I take. In an infinite universe, you could have nanotechnology run amok. You're going to have AI that's taken over. You know, we're looking at new uh, planet forming theory showing that stars, when they collapse, cr you know, create these crystalline, you know, solid surfaces that collect dust that then might create planets in which you have this complete cyclical thing. AI could have run amok singularities everywhere Add any single possibility that has rewritten and reconstructed the universe, all of that. Plus what is the meaning of consciousness and all these? That's what we're dealing with. It is something mm -hmm. that's probably so complex, strange that for us to even like try to wrap our mind around at this point <laughs> yeah. is going to be exactly. Is it, oh, is it yeah. nanotechnology? One, one, is it AI? Is it singularity? Say, is, it, is it God's mind rewriting itself? Is it an is AI? Not a real construct? 
How about AI? Yeah, well, what if it's gone? all of those at once? <laughs> what if it's what if it's the AI gone amok, run amok, and created a a virtual prison for consciousness? <laughs> That's what we're in. Oh, man. Dude, I look at it this way: it's probably AI within an, an infinite number of AIs. Right, right. There's no it's way a to problem know. solver. Is what it's quantum. Right, but but it's it's inorganic, so it can't. It's it has no creativity. But what is organic? Organic is just a term that we've created. Like it's it's a concept. I, it's organic and organic. It's emotionless. Put it that way. Yeah. I don't know, man. Things are crazy. It doesn't have a vagus nerve. Frank vagus? L. Baum book that talks about. I think it's called the Waveries. That talks about uh, electricity being an uh, actual demon and getting into our mind for us to create these things for it. Sounds very Lynchian. Oh, that kind of makes <laughs> Well, it's it sounds no, familiar okay. to something I just was listening or saw. Yeah. It depends on your viewpoint of what electricity is. Yeah. You're doing all these things to feed the beast. Like, what are, yeah. Oh, what the hell was it? God, I'd have to think oh. of that whole the phrasing of the whole thing. Where it's like, yeah, you're what if life was us creating like all this stuff to, to basically, yeah, feed uh, this higher power or whatever, whether it be the, the loose or whatever, you know, yeah, demon feeding, if it's uh, you know, like all, all of the above, yeah, One of Rick, Rick and Morty, Rick's batteries, right. Yes, oh, right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a perfect analogy too for that. Mm-hmm. Just create an energy for. I was just car. I pulled up something out of there, and it's like quantum computing, and you know, it's science's uh, new Ouija board. You know, like right. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it, this it is, is kind of like the biblical aspect. Well, here, here's the it. thing: once they put AI on quantum computers, and if quantum computers work the way that they explain that they do, that they get the answers back before they even ask the questions. So <laughs> yeah. that this quantum computer that has an AI on it means it has a quantum AI on it, which means in general, that thing could possibly be or escape into a space that's outside of time, our time. Mm. Right. Yeah. It so, makes sense. I know I've mentioned it before. Uh, Micah Hanks has talked about the idea that you could have things that are made on such a nanoscale that they circumvent the law of thermodynamics based on how they're designed. And if you were to do something like that with programming, you might have something that's by its very nature sits outside the realm of time. So it could be timeless in its ability to access information. Yeah, it's supposed to pull... I don't think information those, from in between the information, basically. I think if you're in the same time space bubble as we are, you're subject to our time. Maybe. But the idea is, you know, time's kind of like an arrow. Thermodynamics is an arrow. If you have something that that circumvents therm- thermodynamics, you know, there may be some sort of correlation, you know, and as above, so below. You see it in other, you know experiments to one another yeah i know it was just I a postulation it. that i heard i'm not sure where he he pulled his idea from but it was intriguing but, but the thermodynamic laws are violated by nasa by their claims so well the fact and that the we only this thing and everything but i don't want to get into that yeah we well, really i don't have put a whole lot of uh, stock in nasa nowadays like right, but all of us have the same concept of less time. thermal dynamic laws <laughs> yeah, we, we all have the same concept of time but it's it's like if we uh so is it based on our position in the universe? Because allegedly other planets experience time differently, maybe? Are we really moving? Are, are we? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Uh, something's moving. How? <laughs> here's the thing. Movement is all relative to mm. what is around you. If you're moving and you I have know. no point of reference, then there's... Well, I, yeah. So, yeah. Does it matter? I don't think there is movement. There isn't. There's no way to. There's no way to measure it either, from the ground. So, kind of SOL. Man, uh, IBM just announced that they're releasing the Q System One 
or as the IBM team described it, it's the world's first fully integrated universal quantum computing system designed mm-hmm. for scientific and commercial use. I.e. mind control. <laughs> <laughs> how, just, how, fast, just, how fast are they getting now? Are they actually getting to speeds that it makes them valuable for their computing power? Interesting. Crunch yeah, they, more data. That's the thing. Yeah, I mean, but currently, for... can they crunch more data? Because it's one of those, the way I understood it is each qubit can act as basically like a normal transistor would on a chip so that it would, you know, but if you have a chip that's got millions of transistors, they don't you know, have an eight the, qubit chip, you know, in 30 different positions. I think the most they have right now is 1K qubits. They're not up to that mega, <laughs> mega scale yet. So now, so and then it's all experimentation with the technology is why it's being bought. That but makes still, sense. the thing with the AI on the quantum computers, they can run really interesting algorithmic models versus straight up SQL calls or, you know, however they're searching big data with RMAP or whatever. I, you know, it depends on what people are using today. A lot it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it is. And like a good example of a company that would benefit from this would be Cambridge Analytica. The amount of data they have and the models they build and the ones that the AI on this quantum computer could actually come up with on its own while Everybody, analyzing the data. Buddy, if, you have, if you have the crunching power, I mean, every encryption, every everything is, you know, breakable. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, that's not my point. My point is they'll have these data sets of really interesting niche uh, segments of the market, put it that way, that they can go out and sell for high price because it's, you know, they want to find guys who like to kill elephants in Africa on safaris but wear women's underpants. You know, they can come up with that data set. (laughs) Yeah, dude, like... uh yeah, it would be insane to see what an AI could do with, or you know, some sort of advanced machine calculating to to get data. I I saw a news story about a guy who was upset at Target because his daughter was getting ads for pregnancy for for items for pregnancy. He's like, she's sixteen, she's not pregnant, and then like a month later, it turns out she was pregnant. <laughs> what happened is their their systems were so. Um, <coughs> so complicated for whatever realize, reason it realized that her purchasing habits showed a trend that other pregnant women had previously go. gone through. So when she, who knows what it was, bought this certain type of ice cream with this certain type of cosmetic item, it automatically triggers that this person 90% of the time ends up pregnant. Here you go. Coupons ahead of time. And so, I mean, if that's happening on a small scale with kids in pregnancy, who, I mean, it, the sky is the absolute limit when it comes mm-hmm. to the NSA data sets. They pretty much know everything. What about the Facebook data sets, which Cambridge Analytica has? Yeah, yeah. The, the most genius thing in the Facebook data sets is all the questionnaires that everybody fills out. <laughs> I've been one that always fills them out improperly, knowing that it's being pulled for psychological data. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, it's yeah, a every giant as a NSA operation. All, yeah, all yep. of those, like, see what kind see, of personality from the TV show you are. That's all just bullshit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. Zuckerberg is clearly the first wet AI. He, he's he's the first field test of some oh, sort of he, DARPA technology. He's, he's a puppet. He's just a front. He, he didn't even fucking write it. He stole it off two other guys, I thought. I'm pretty sure that's but, what the movie said. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, so Facebook and Google were both heavily funded by this uh, venture capital firm called InQtel, which is basically the CIA's venture capital firm in Silicon Valley. So they hold they hold, held substantial stakes in those companies. A part of them investing is basically this giant NDA, which says you can never tell anyone where you got this money, <laughs> kind of thing. And you have to do everything we say. I was just heard someone talking about it the other day. It's funny. I'll find the video, but yeah, that's, it's real. Let's go look it up. It's I N Q T E L. Yeah. It's all this. It's going to be insane. There is it's amazing how far you can go when you're friends with a three letter agency. Yep. Uh, this, uh, comp- some other companies that purchased this D wave computer system for research, uh, purposes in order to benchmark their and test their capabilities. Los Alamos labs. And uh, Lockheed Martin. 
Yeah, they got to see where the the public tech is compared yeah, to Yeah, the new Q system one employees advance that make it more suited to, you know f- for businesses like that. Yeah, the Ion Q, there there's a company that's they wanted to make these smaller quantum computers to you know and and basically access IBM's cloud, you know, you know providing access to that to ever you know like your home computer being a quantum based computer. <laughs> God. What's insane that I think of is if Jerry's, you know, right on about this, that these things can punch information through, you know, time dimension. Yeah. If you have a machine that you're able to punch through to other machines or your own machine through time, you're going to muck around with some systems, the financials, everything else, all like there's no way that you're going to be <laughs> able to going forward, be able to predict, you know, any any type of financial market or, market or global market or trading market. Mm. You you can't you can barely you know, okay like if, unless you're day trading doing personal stock trading these days is almost impossible. It's impossible. You'll, you'll yeah. get stopped out by the program trading, which is all run by AI. That's why you see a, you those trends in like two seconds just completely mm-hmm. implode or explode. Mm-hmm. It's all automated. Well, yeah. plus and plus a civil, as a civilian, you're you're subject to a twenty minute delay. Yeah, and you know the fact that. Say you you tell your stock guy like, hey man, sell or you have all these limiters, you know, like once it reaches no, this they're, point, they're boom. gatekeepers. They're ways yeah. to make they're fucking they're. It's look at it as a mafia, okay? It's you're paying protection money. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. ordering. Well, it's funny. I listen to DH Unplugged, and they talk about this that you'll see waves in the algorithms where certain stocks will just everything day by day is going up and down, and what you're seeing is just this cycle of. AI's buying and trading and it's just bouncing back and forth with off systems and you can see it, this in the crypto it's, market. Yeah, in the crypto market definitely. Yeah. Dude, that's a good point. I haven't talked cryptos in forever. Oh my god. Because they plummeted and nobody wants to talk about world. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happened to them? Are they still around? Crypto crypto oh, dude, is super valuable back. if you're trying to transfer money around the regulations the banks put in. And when you're doing that, it's not so much on the value over time. It's what it's worth today versus, you know, five hours from now. It's fully transparent too. It's the best part. That, yeah, that's the beauty um, of it. The uh, um, cutting tra- out the middle middleman aspect of it. Oh. Well, and you can do stuff. There's situations you get locked in. Okay, well, it's going to take me two weeks to get the money. It's going to cost me 15 bucks, or we can do it in five minutes. Okay, let's do that. But imagine everything on a blockchain and AI integrating with those systems. That's just... (laughs) Right, because isn't that like the theory that it's unhackable because you'd have to have the same amount of computers running to hack it ba- something some along the lines of that You'd have quantum it. computing baby yeah, quantum, quantum computing running it there dude. you go oh, one one God. computer can can uh manage the entire crypto market right <laughs> yeah. it's all happening <sighs> man man should we play a jingle quantum quantum <laughs> theory let's see one reason you should pay attention to quantum computing can, in theory, defeat all modern encryption. Right? Mm. From secure banking transaction to confidential correspondence to, yes, blockchain, quantum computing can correct them all quickly and simply. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's 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 true from everything I get. You yeah. know, if you... If, if this idea that once something is observed, it changes and you can monitor that change. I've seen some projects done by DARPA where they've been able to quantumly entangle photons and then be able to tell if they're observed afterwards. So what you would do is I would send you a quantumly entangled um, photon with an encryption key, highly sophisticated cri- encryption key. When you got it, I would be able to tell that nobody in the middle looked at that information because yeah. if it had been, it would be changed. So at that point, I know you've got the key. Now I can send you the signal. And it doesn't matter if anybody intercepts that signal because that's the, the super encrypted file. And then you would have you know, no way for you to get the key. Or if they get the key, you know it was gotten, send another. Let's see. It's... Uh, there's a company. Let's see. Russia. There's, okay. Uh, build a bigger, better quantum computer, uh, you know, 
computers, uh, bigger, better quantum computers is just what this uh, nice industry is focusing on. Uh, there's a Russian quantum computer center or RC, RQC, an international conference on quantum technologies, ICQT. This was in 2017, last month in Moscow. The professor. I see QD2. I see QD2. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, they made a 51 quant, quant, qubit quantum computer. Oh, man. Yeah. It's a lot a of 51, qubits. Yeah. yeah. I heard something that like uh, one uh, D wave computer has more computing power than all of the human brains on the earth right now. Oh, geez. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do we know that that thing's not already in our brains? Unbelievable. It's true. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Feeding us dreams and shit. Yeah, Dude, like if, it, if, it, if it can punch through time, then it always has been. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It could be the archons. Yeah. Created yeah, exactly. our reality. The arc, yes. Yeah. And it it's could, happened on every other world out there in the universe. Exactly. All fighting for dominance. <clears throat> It's just an AI-driven universe. The gods are just computers. Yeah. The t- so, so in The Flash, they had this thing called a time demon, which was, quote-unquote, trapped in the time stream. And until it had enough anchor points and physical reality to manifest, it was trapped, spread across all time and space. So basically, it existed outside of time and space and couldn't enter it, but could view it and manipulate it. Um, and that's kind of what an AI would be, a quantum AI this thing that doesn't exist really in the time stream, but out of it. But yeah, this dude who was in the time stream, his name was Malice. He was a dick. It It was on Legends of Tomorrow. I'm sorry, not Flash. What? What, dude? Oh, does it create like the infrastructure that that matter inhabits? Is that? The, The demon? They actually called it a time demon. No, it was an entity that was banished from the time stream. Oh, okay. So, yeah, okay, I get it. So, the, in, in the show, the time stream is a tunnel, essentially. So, you can go into it and then leave it at some other time if you have the right coordinates. Okay. Dude. So, this, this thing was in the entity, was in the time, was in the time tunnel, got banished because he was bad. Well, think about this in the real world. If in like an anim- an animistic view, the software on the computer may not be the only driving life force behind the AI. Oh, absolutely, and this that, that, you, that reminds me of what I was going to say to what am I calling you, Watcher, Mister Watcher? Yes. Um, to your electricity being a demon in an animistic world, or with that worldview, it has spirit. So yeah. Well, the way electricity moves through things too creates uh, magnetic fields, which could be transferring through time. Who knows? Yeah, I've, there's this guy on YouTube. His name's Ken Wheeler, who's got some really interesting viewpoints. You do watch him, okay? Yeah, so you've yeah. heard his electricity stuff with the dielectric and how. Yeah. So have yeah. you ever watched uh, or heard of Gerard Morin? No. He's a alternative energy researcher, and he's basically coming out and said this a couple of years ago now that that electricity is, is, is a resonance. It's not a mm-hmm. electron flow. It basically, it's a frequency that vibrates uh, the, the molecule, say in a copper wire, right? So it will vibrate the copper, elect, copper electrons and move through them. Basically, if you think about like a, one of those balls on the desk, you know, the click, click, click balls, how the middle ones don't move because the, the inertia is transferred. Well, resonance does the same thing through a wire. Copper is just a really good conductor, so there's less impedance. Impedance. Have you uh, you ever heard of Rupert Sheldrake? Yeah. Yeah. I've I've been doing the deep dive on his, which is all about resonance, all about habits, not about um, like, you know, uh, genes and things like that. And it it all comes down to waves and bouncing and interacting of frequencies within Mm -hmm. within each other. And that to me seems like the most likely candidate behind everything because everything, like you said, it comes down to a wave, a frequency, a resonance of vibration. You know, when there is no hot and cold, there's faster and slower vibration. Mm -hmm. Uh, Right. Higher amplitudes. And the the interesting thing I think that, that to me in my head coming from like an atomic model perspective 
to, I've always thought that like in the circuit board, you always hear about electron flow. So you just get this idea that electrons are moving, you know, inside that there's like a wave, like a wave, an ocean wave, like shit moving around in there. And the the more narrow it is, the less electrons can get through and yada, yada, yada. But that's not it at all. It's just, they're basically super high frequency sound waves. Well, there's an example that happens in everyone's household. Well, you, well, there you go. You have a microwave, but you also, uh, you, you go down to your plug in your wall Guess what happens over time to that wire that's connecting that copper wire to your outlet? What yeah, happens? the pixies escape <laughs> because of fre- of frequency vibration of that mm-hmm. line, right. yeah. and the radiation. <laughs> oh, and radiation. Well, yeah, because you well, you can't. Yeah, yeah, you make yeah, a point there too. Yeah. Three phase uh, AC uh, electricity is funky. It can deteriorate. Yeah, it's a giant loop. It's a right. it's a big loop. But mm-hmm. they just keep pushing along. <laughs> it's like a big plate spinning. <clears throat> There's a, a great podcast called Nine Volt Nirvana, mm-hmm. and it's about Sounds the program awesome. that the, the government uses in which they train snipers by putting a magnetic thing on the side of their head that stimulates the part of your brain that's associated with whatever skills for shooting, where you can oh. take people and they go into a program for like an hour. It makes them think that it's like, you know, a six minute long thing and their accuracy is like off the chart before where it wasn't it like it hones you in a way. Well, if you can do things like that, why wouldn't it make sense that there's another frequency that can just deaden out who you are and, and, and you know, squash your skills? There are. Oh, for exactly. Sure. It's proven. Crowd control device. 5G. (laughs) Oh, yeah, but nobody wants to think about that. The television, the wiring in your house, the 5G, the router, the phone, the. the, the Everyone notices it all the time when there's a power outage in your neighborhood. Man, it feels so weird. It does. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, you feel it. There's there's, there's, there's a calmness. Yes. And you're not even feeling the true calmness because you're still getting radar. You're still getting radio frequencies. You're still getting television frequencies. All these things pumping down from above. Yeah. Going to the ocean, you're getting zapped with stuff from sonar and Fukushima. (laughs) Yeah. But I'm not even, I'm talking just on the 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 unnatural (laughs) spectrum. Like the, it's impossible in you, for you in this world to find a place where you're not going to be getting hit with some sort of unnatural frequency. (sighs) Underground. Yeah. In a cave. In a cloning center. Which is probably why they're yep, geoengineering right. the planet. Donald, me and Donald Marshall. <laughs> save us to send them uh, those ionic waves from the from the sun in space. You know, blast I want to know the what planet. they're hiding in the LED sync rates. <laughs> in the, Optogenetics, you know, man. Have you read about it? Epigenetics? Opto. So it's Opto- light, okay, stim- optimal. light stimulating mm-hmm. proteins in the brain. So they they used it on rats first, or mice, but they'll put a little, like a they'll cut a little hole into the head so that um, they can stimulate with light certain parts of the brain, and they feed them proteins that when their brain starts using that um, the protein, they're um, light sensitive, so they can stimulate certain parts of the brain. And they can make them do specific tasks. They've Bio- done wow. a step further. Um, like again, Bio- Radiolab did this on Alzheimer's in light frequency. They decided to take a different approach because when you get Alzheimer's, your brain goes into a certain uh, frequency that they can measure. I forget what it's called. It's called the something phase or whatever. And so they'd measure that. And they said, well, this is a response. Maybe there's a way that we can try to affect this phase and bring it up. And the first thing they did was that. They drilled a hole. They put in some uh, cells that had been uh, genetically engineered to be light sensitive, so that they would, when they were flashed with a pulse of light, they would have a certain like it was a brain cell, basically, you know, pulsing, and that that would be able to then try to cause a cascading effect in the brain, and it did. And so what they found is that they could put in this 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 frequency that would then get the brain to start turning on all its underlying programs, and they were able to through natural ways through an hour of the stimulation every day. The, it would clean out its own plaques. It went ha- from having Alzheimer's to having like no Alzheimer's because 90% or 80% of the plaques were cleared out within a couple of days. They then took this and they said, well, you know, 
maybe we don't need to actually drill into the side of the head. And then they just started exposing the rats to these frequencies of light in a controlled uh, uh, space for like six or seven hours a day or something like that, just using their eyes. And they got the same response. And I'm going, whoa, 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 hold on. So you're telling me through certain types of light frequency, you can reverse Alzheimer's. Who's to say that the frequency the because when I see LEDs of different types, I see the flash, I see the pulsations, I see the frequencies, I see it on screens, whether it's you know the old cathode rays, the new LEDs. And to me, I'm going, well, of course there's going to be some unknown negative effect on some well, people. We only have the dark side to of uh, the light spectrum. Mm-hmm. Like if you look at the color gamma, it's red, blue, green, right? The, the, the lower vibratory. Yeah, the light side is cyan, magenta, and yellow. Yeah, the- Right. Plus, there's a whole spectrum we can't see. Yeah, like ninety four percent of the spectrum we can't see. Something. Oh like that. man. Oh, dude. Yeah. I mean, people forget that you know whether it's radio rays, gamma rays, they're all just a different frequency of a wave. God, could you imagine if you were so able to you know, experience those? <laughs> waves, that, yeah, that infrared heat is an actual light wave. Right, and waves need a medium through which to travel. How the fuck do these things travel billions of light years without? It's the ether. It's, it's the ether. It's the ether, That's right? I'm just getting that. It's electric. gotta be there. The Why universe. is it ignored? Why it's is it stepped around, danced around? The dark matter they're searching for, you fucking dumbasses. It's the ether. Yes, you it's know, the it's, ether. <laughs> That's why I they love, need to I love it. it. I love they it. they need yeah. to mathematically explain <laughs> it before they can discover it, and they'll never be able to. Astrophysics is very quickly going towards electric universe. If you're looking yeah. at all the new modeling that's coming out, everything is showing electric spirals. Everything is showing indications of the electric charges. All, all the science is adding up to where they're going to have to start switching their models because they're aligning with the electric universe. <laughs> probably not the quantum computing. <laughs> not only that, all of their current models are with well, the opportunity to prove them are, are failing. Yeah, and the, yeah. the ones that they have proved are breaking apart. There's a guy that I've been paying attention to who breaks down to fundamental misunderstanding through basic science that the sun is not gaseous, that it is a plasma, and it is very provable on the very basics of scientific um, science. He he does such a great job of explaining it, and I'm like, this is great because it shows one of those underpinnings of science that we build all of astrology, or, you know, not astrology, um, astrophysics on, and you've got this one thing that just falls. And that means that all of your modeling for the entire universe right now, it's wrong. It's wrong. Right. It's wrong. wrong, But they want, it's going to fall apart. It's going to fall apart quickly. Eventually it will. Yes. What is the science moves forward one death at a time? Isn't that the saying? Yep. Yeah. So the other thing about the sun is now though, now that everybody has access to information and people can start seeing the bullshit and the thunderbolts thing doesn't have to go through the refuse and the boards and you know, the, all the people dying, we're hearing about it. Now the young people, you know, not the people that have to wait till they're 60 to start to find out how far away the sun really is. (laughs) We're going to get wall back. Check it out. (laughs) We'll take a cruise up there. Flat Earth cruise. Let's go yeah. Check it out. Flat Earth cruise. Yeah, you don't need a ship, dude. You oh, can man. exist here and in the other side of the fucking galaxy at the same time. How are we going to get matter. through the dome, <laughs> dude? It's the ether. We'll just get through. It's cool. <laughs> it's the ether. It's electrically charged plasma. Like my ass. Oh, boom! There we go. That one back to cruising with stake standards. <laughs> no doubt. I never saw Survivor. Is it was that like a reality show or uh, oh, like dude. lost? Me and what? Adam, dude. Me and, I me and Adam watching watched, Survivor watched, right now. And what? We, me and Adam retarded. Had a, uh, we had, I'm on like you? season twenty three. I'm watching through the series a second time. Why? Dude, Survivor's Survivor's oh, it's awesome. Uh, it's not yeah. awesome. It's retarded. It, dude. Oh it, no, it, dude. See, for you me, don't, you don't okay, understand. Here's if the there's thing. one reality show that you're gonna watch that doesn't matter if they script and fuck with behind the scenes, it's that that show. I'm not gonna watch you any. Know, sure. People fall falling face first into fires, later getting arrested on pedophilia. It's crazy shit, man. For, it's, for me, it's, it's, it's uh, a requirement, I think, to get on the show, isn't it? It was a show that you know it came out. I was I was probably uh, 15 years old or something when it came out. 2001, I, I think, is I, when it uh, okay, first so I was, aired. I was 16. I watched it and I was, was like, the year oh, I graduated. This is, this is reality TV. Like it was a new thing. I loved it. 
And then like, it, it was one of those things, like I, I didn't watch it for a little bit and then I came back to it and that nostalgia factor hit me and I was like, ah, oh, this is just good trash. Like it, that's, that's what it, that's what it is to me. And I love it. I mean, Adam, we had a viewing party on zoom for the season finale this oh, year. Oh yeah. It was but awesome. Here's what I love. There, <laughs> there's, a, yeah. there's a great psychological value to the show. And I love it just from a decision-making standpoint, even with all the produced shit and the fact that you're only seeing a condensed yeah, version, man. it's the that's idea good. that, you know, the group is there. They're going to win a million dollars. You get to a point where you're pissing everybody off and then those people get to choose who wins. So it's just the whole dynamic of how do you convince a bunch of people that you just had to vote off that everybody agreed to vote off that you're the one who deserves yeah, the money. Man. Well, they should really and just so call there's, it like, there's, a, like, there's this like this knot of just like, how does, how do minds work? And that's why I watch it. Yeah. They should call it manipulator. Cause it's just a bunch of people manipulating and deceiving each other <laughs> to be honest. No, no, great. that's not true. There's the one season with Fabio and Fabio did no lying. He was the nice guy. He went on and he took the whole thing and won it. So uh, any, any game well, strategy go. within it can work. There's some, and then there's people like Russell who freaking Russell is the, love the best you know fucking names, player on the planet, finding hidden idols everywhere, manipulating, turning everybody against each other. He can make it to the end anytime, but he can't fucking win because he loses the social game. And that's what I love. It's like, uh, anyway, sorry, pooch. survivor, go watch it. It's on Hulu it. all seasons. I do like um, <laughs> big brother. I've watched a few of those. I've never watched that. Uh, it's all yeah. drama. That, yeah, that's man, a lot I, of need, I need the whole game uh, aspect in my reality. I had to watch some Jersey, Jersey Shore everybody. once with my kids. That was, Ooh, I'm sorry, Jersey Jer. Shore was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Did you question your parenting at that point in your life? I question my sanity. Gabs are here. <laughs> the whole thing, the whole idea of this smush room was creepy. Yeah. Smush room, I like that. I'm well, sure there's been did. a couple of sexual assault lawsuits, I think, with with that show. With Snooky. Oh, I don't know if Snooki. Oh no, not Jersey Shore. I, Big Brother. I mean. Oh well, the, the I don't think Julie Chen's going to be the host anymore. I doubt. <laughs> There's a couple lawsuits going on with her husband. <laughs> uh, from from what I gather. <clears throat> from um, what I gather. <laughs> yeah. He's um. Oh, man. What the fuck's his name? The the founder or not or uh, owner of a uh, CBS, whatever the hell the guy is. It's got oh super- yeah him yeah uh-huh. Les Moonves or Les Moonves. Mm. <laughs> what a name! Who made that up? That's a <clears throat> slick name. Well, CBS more is Sunville. The, it's the CIA Broadcasting Central. So I mean. You have that. It's the Columbia Broadcasting System. For the goddess Columbia. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, teach me about the goddess Columbia, Jer. Oh, I don't know. I don't know enough about it. Watch some of Freeman's shit. He's the one who figured all of it out. Like the whole think of the space Columbia. shuttle. So, so space shuttle. La- wait, wait, wait. The Statue of Liberty is goddess Columbia. Oh, okay. Okay. Um... Watcher, crypto mystic, whatever you want to be called. This is the first time I'm meeting you, man. So, so what's 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 up? What's your story? What's what's going on? What do you do? What's your thing? Well, I'm what's your shtick? I uh, have a shop where I do a lot of blacksmithing and shit. But oh, nice! Uh, <laughs> you're right in the gr- yeah. You're in, you're in it. You're in he's, a right ca- he's a Kanakistani. Yeah, from Canada. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. We're friendly with Canadians. I know, I know a couple Canadians. Yeah. I do a lot of crypto trading and shit. I got into it maybe probably a year and a half ago pretty heavily. Do you have a real job? Uh, yeah, I do have okay, a real okay. job as well, yeah. So there you go. Where, 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 what Alberta. province are you in? Alberta. Are you anywhere near Edmonton? Yeah, close. Yeah, I Who's in there failed? <laughs> yeah. We have, we have a couple friends around there. We have three. Oh, really? Yeah. Specifically, yeah. yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah, I'm like a couple hours from there. Oh, nice. One one of them is dude like. Sweet. He will paint you blacksmithing. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah, no. So, yeah, I make shit and crypto trade. And uh, I've got a buddy. We're working on a podcast, just a movie. Nice. Analysis. 
That's and, and when I'm stuff. a good word turner, I'm going to make wood shit and he's going to wrap it in iron and we're going to oh, sell yeah. it for millions of dollars. Dude, that's Let's like we could get we could get booths at cons doing stuff like that. <laughs> just just I'm, travel around selling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm so yeah, yeah, Grimsteak. Uh, you can travel around with Jerry's lathe around right. the country. <laughs> <laughs> I'll spin you right round, baby. Right round, yeah. baby. Dude, I was looking up um, <laughs> pod, pod, podcasting studio stuff, and um, I don't, I was looking at. I was just gonna redo this room one of these days here but uh just cool ideas and one of the coolest things i saw was an aerostar trailer like and they had it a mobile podcast rig so like it, it was super dope dude it, uh now that would be like pretty cool to travel around you could go to all these these things but i'm married and have kids and i can't do that so yeah you the <clears> it's too you hard for that. me to logistically to pull off but <laughs> Dude, I'm not married or didn't have no kids. I yeah. Do, so give me that plan. <laughs> we got this. Uh, here's the plan. You can watch them on the weekends. Okay. Yeah. We can just trick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we can head out on the. Yeah. I know. Hey, during the week. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. It'd have to be like a. Maybe the trade off could be like. Here's what you do blankets on the I'll doors, the deadbolt on the door, done. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> if the kids are being noisy, a little bit of cough syrup in there. So, uh huh. They're too old for that now. <laughs> They're up to Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I got to give them a half bottle before they even yes. shut up. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're hip to that game. <clears throat> nah, yeah, I, I, I thought the Aerostar thing was pretty cool, but it, it was kind of like, 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 like an Aerostar van. Like well, it would, no, <laughs> you remember the Ford Aerostars? No, I remember it was an Astro, an Astro stream. Yeah. Oh, the Astro is right. It was the Ford Astros. No, Dodge Astro. Astro. Chevy Astro. Dodge Astro. Was it? Uh, oh, Ford Aerostar Chevy Astro. Yeah. It was the hip candy, free candy mobile. Well, that was mm-hmm. our, um, our tour, our band touring van was a, <clears throat> uh, Astro van or whatever. Yeah. We used to have a Nissan Quest. And That's the only minivan I had. had. No, never had a minivan. Never. My parents family. owned two of the Dodge Caravans that had the Mitsubishi engines in them. The ones oh, where wow. the paint would always peel on the hoods. <laughs> Those were, like, yeah, yeah. It was like yeah. three years when they yeah. all had just like gray zinc hoods, the entire like Chrysler <laughs> line. That's hilarious. Yeah. My, um, what was I? Oh, my my sister in law. They got a Toyota, the, the their minivan they have. Man, that is like a Taj Mahal on wheels. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like sixty grand too. I don't know. I don't think it was that. Yeah, that they don't have that model, but it's pretty damn up there. Yeah, <clears> I'd say at least high thirties. Porsche has one too, or, or yeah. like a crossover. It's called the Cayenne. That's. A, those are cool. Yeah. No, I've they're seen, ugly. I've, I've seen they're them cool. around, but no, oh, they I get know. really good reviews for, for capability though. I've got this tiny little car right now and I hate it. Oh, your Nissan? Yeah. It's yeah. too small. I want I can't see anything. I can't see out my <laughs> back window, you know, it's so small. But whatever. Hey, check this out. CERN unveils a new this is just like today at two o'clock oh, unveils. Down. No, CERN unveils designed for a sixty two mile round atom smasher more powerful than the LHC. What you know what pisses me off? Wrong? They fuck the, the, the LHC yeah. that they were building now was supposed to be like, like 20 times bigger. It was a even yeah. more giant scale between all the countries and everybody fucking pushed out on it. And it's like, okay, yeah, you could have been doing the super, super advanced science in the next hundred years today. Yeah. They said it might open up in or 2040. Destroying our fucking reality. If they did. That. Yeah. There's another one. Uh, no, no, it, or the, not. That shit probably happens all the time well, in the universe. Every second, every place that you're not doing maybe. much, but what, what, if, what if the universe has like a, a reset for catastrophe? Oh, good. Here's a pic- Let's help them. Here's a picture. I'm just streaming this in our chat right what now. If CERN's that's only how- goal is to test that. <laughs> There's the LHC. It's like the size of a penny. And then you have like the size of, oh, I don't even know, like, uh, wow. fucking toilet Seriously. paper roll. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 62 mile. That's humongous. 
<clears throat> Here's the problem. Their whole idea of the atom is wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Smashing atoms. Yeah, right. yeah. I don't think, you know, I, I'm not a believer in the atomic model. No, so. but what I think it does is it allows you to see the, the manifestations of the waves from things that you smash together. So there is well, information that can be interpreted that just they're interpreting not, the wrong side of it. What I'm trying to say, though, is that <clears throat> that building a larger thing because they feel they need more energy to they need to collide bigger particles because the ones are pl- colliding are too small so the quarks they're producing are too small to, to, to yeah they're looking time. to the so hunt for new particles with collision energies 10 times higher so the right. other like said, they're right. looking for different shit to slam together yeah. well, that the cover story is that yeah. they're, they're they're trying to break the atomic model down to its core constituent parts and if the model is wrong they could be doing something harmful to who knows the poles, the magnetic field, of the earth, the earth the itself. Mandela effect. <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying yeah. they could actually do physical harm. Well, I guess what you're saying is it's to a point of science that we just don't know. So every every question is on the table. It's almost like a religion, though, because they believe in this core foundation of science mm-hmm. that was came out of the, t- the t- 20s or 30s, I think. God. Five point seven. <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't. It's like, how far are they going to go? What if that particle work? physics can be completely wrong, but it still has its place as an explanatory model, and it'll be a good transition point for the next phase of science. Oh, let me put it this way: What good has come out of all the money that went into CERN so far? Well, mm, let's put it this way: yeah, even if their data, to find out here if their data is being yeah. misinterpreted, as long as oh. their data is still there, once we you know remodel the science, it'll still be valuable for for reassessing. If you, know, you hire someone to write you a program and they and they write you a shitty program, and you hire another guy to test it until it works, you know that's not <laughs> a good way to you, that. That's a you've wasted money. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. They're just trying to find more. Um, it's the next generation of discovery machine, which that's just uh, a discovery which machine would be sensitive this. to possible new particles if they exist. Right. Yeah, good even luck, if they are too that. massive to be made by current accelerators or only di- uh, directly show up as small changes to the stand model. <clears throat> yeah, they're going to. They're hoping that it, let's see, it would allow to study the Higgs boson to factors of to 20 to 50 precision. Yeah. The, the Higgs boson is nonsense. Yeah. I, I liked in, uh, there's a, there's a great Xbox, uh, game, the Ghostbusters game, the, the, and you have a bols a boson dart. <laughs> <laughs> it's freaking sweet. <laughs> well, bosons are yeah. are real. Th- well, they're real math- yeah. mathematical things. But yeah, the Higgs is just a type of boson. They're measuring something. Are they measuring it accurately? It's a field. You know, and, and, they're trying and exactly. to measure a field. Exactly. Well, yeah. Well, my yeah, view of it is there's no there's no field theory that's part of physics. That's a problem, and that's where they're going to clash. It's coming. I, I'm I'm really convinced that that is a fundamental. It, it is coming, and as I said, science moves forward one death at a time. So as these older, staunch, you know, believers, I don't know what you want to call them, the old guard. Once the old guard's gone, the new kids will come in. Mm-hmm. You, know, you talked guard, about it before. One of the things that's happening is uh, computer modeling is getting so good that once they've started plugging in. The infra- I should say it's, the, the information that's coming out of some of the new supercomputer modeling is mm-hmm. showing electrical field activity within space models. And there's no getting around this type of stuff now that everything's modeling the same. Do you think right. at some point that these, pro- these systems, those comp systems, will get to a point where we won't do much research anymore? We'll just have AIs do it for us? Take all this data, crunch it, and tell me what you think possible yeah. i mean once you hit that singularity level of exponential growth who who knows what the the capabilities are will it get lost in the data or will you be able to actually push through you know focused if requests real, if with that's a real thing right mm-hmm. well i'd say this jerry if one of those things is real it's happened and it's happened in a lab within a government somewhere 10 20 30 years ago 
And I don't worry about it because it's not happening tomorrow. It has happened. And if it's going to, I can't control it because it's behind a black wall. I don't think that a self, I'm, we're talking about singularity being a self-aware, self-awareness in AI, right? Yep. Not necessarily okay. either that or just some sort of infinite computational power ability. I put it in the way that even if it's just, let's say I have something that is so infinite in its capabilities of computation that I can unlock areas of physics that are unknown. Well, what power does that have? And so, you know, add that on to something that could be in, you know, an infinite capable AI that you could ask a question of that, that could maybe map out every atom in the universe through some sort of unknown, uh, quantum entanglement. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then if you start getting into those realms, maybe you could pump through a question. I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be done by IBM with, you know, it's big like things or whatever the, it's like the huge, Watson. uh, the huge Watson thing plus. Is, uh, yeah, in, in uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the big machine that they ask, what's the, what the, what's the secret mm-hmm. to the universe? 43. 42, 42, 42, 42. 42. 42. Get out. You're dead to me. I'm done. He never read it. He never read it. <laughs> no, but I've watched it several times. That's why it's bad. The book is so much better. Well, the books are always better than the movie. That's But that book particularly, like the Harry Potter books, you know, are so much better than the movie. And you can read one in a day. They're yeah, so the, easy to read. The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, except for book five. Movie. Ready Player One was like a thousand times better than the movie. I'm sure. The movie was pretty much like a big marketing. Ad. Well, Harry Potter's definitely that way. People don't understand the amount of esoteric oh. stuff that, that she put in. She was super, super well-versed in all the ancient <laughs> myths and religions and lores. Exactly. And that's why people freaked out on the religious spectrum about it. And It triggered them. Oh yeah, but don't, don't let it fool you. There's a magical reason her stuff hit the psyche of the people the way that it did, and Scholastic was genius for hang, her hanging on. That's because she, I think she's a manufacturer, like that, a, a person, personality. She's some secret society person who, who they chose to be famous, and they portrayed her as the you know what it's history possible. did she have before she was homeless? Mm. Right. I don't know, but her political views and leanings are mm. are super interesting in the ways that she comes out. It's all anti-Trump, and she's had her her yes. tit shot in a ringer a couple of times, pretty bad. Where she had to come back and say, "Nope, I was completely misquoting the situation." And speaking of tits in a ringer, what happened with that Brexit vote? Oh, they, oh uh, I saw something about Theresa May um, losing. Yeah, oh, the, they good. they voted to stay in the Brexit. No. no no, they didn't. Yeah, what did they, vote, uh, they voted against her deal? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. I, I saw so it's a no deal Brexit, which is the earlier. perfect thing. That's, that's what we need. What they need is a no deal Brexit. All right, I see them typing. A deal Brexit now. is basically they're going to pay the EU off to get out, and a no deal means they get out and don't have to pay. They voted it down just as planned. No deal on the table. Good so deal. Just, that's awesome. That's is what, that what the go. no agenda show was not thinking was going to happen. I don't remember. Well, here's the thing. If if what's going on right now in England is that the media and the government is portraying it as the end of the world if they break off with the EU. Yeah. But it's it's the exact opposite because all the money that they're funneling into the EU, they have don't have to pay anymore. Yeah. And all the things that they couldn't get before because the EU restricted them, they get all that back. Like they get all their freedoms and shit back. Oh yeah, there was so the the problem was all the micromanaging where it got to be stupid things like the (laughs) amount of like pelt size inside of pillows was being regulated, and you're like, what is going on? And then, you know, to think that you go to jail, you have your you can't import export. You have the whole issue with potato chips and Mm -hmm. different things being you know uh, Pringles no longer being able to be imported under certain taxes because they're not a potato chip because they're not made from potato starch. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's exactly right. And all that will go away for, for free. It's the best thing possible, but the media in, in the UK is portraying it as like this devastating thing. It's going to mm-hmm. kill your family if, if there's no deal. My Tom favorite just, thing was, Tom hey, the public said, voted yeah, for it, what, but uh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Okay. That's not what we wanted you to do. Okay, <laughs> we're going to do this one more time and see if you can get it right. <laughs> we'll tell you what's best for you. <laughs> I'll tell you, the Rothschilds lost this one. That's, <laughs> it's going. They're leaving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Ireland uh, was a big uh, contributing factor in this one. France is next. 
Oh, dude, France, it's how many weeks in a row has it been now? Nine weeks? Nine weeks. Yeah. And a police officer shot one of the yellow vests in the back of the head today. Last Jesus. Yeah, so it's getting, getting out of control. It's getting sticky. It is. It's getting real sticky. And the media is like, they're not even being clear on what's going on. Like, I feel like nobody's reported that it's like anti globalism or what's even what's happening right now. Or maybe I just can't read. That's probably the more the case. No, it's just not being reported on the news. I mean, where are you hearing about yellow vest that? It's not oh. from the front page yeah. of CNN. Well, yeah, front dude, page of CNN and- is what Anderson Cooper had to tell Trump about his new whatever. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? Why like, am I listening what, to the uh, CIA shill over the bullshit? There's fucking riots and people last dying night. in another country. There's tsunamis and Krakatoas. Well, France is also passing a law right now where you can't have uh, protests or something. I, I I saw something like that. Like they're uh, or or unauthorized protests. You have to have permission to protest. It's some ridiculous shit like that. Like it's it's <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Uh. Sounds like if you want I a little like chaos, you might as well move to France. Get yeah. away with a couple of things. Sure. Always wanted to burn a car or two. Yeah, but then he'd be I never liked Fiat's very movie. much. Yeah, but I love those Citrons. <laughs> Man. So, yeah. I made that picture when Macron got elected. In 2017? Yep, because he beat um, Marie Le Pen. Yeah, I remember that. And she was, you know. The- well, yeah, they labeled her as a Nazi and all that shit. Like, there was a mm-hmm. smear campaign mm-hmm. against her. So. But he married his high school teacher. Yeah, isn't that fucked up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plus, he worked for some, uh, some H, HBSC, HSBC. He was a investment The bank. worst of all the banks. So we could probably yeah. agree that she's a beard of some sort. He's a reverse pedophile. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> I don't I don't kidding. I don't know. <laughs> he's robbing the cradle. Maybe he's, no, he's ro- no, instead of robbing no, the cradle, he's robbing, he's robbing the grave. grave. Robbing he's the an grave. adult baby, maybe. Maybe she dresses him up like in a diaper and he's got oh, a I bet there's weird shit that goes on. They do some weird, real freaky shit. And she Definitely. nurses him. So that's why Probably. she's got these milky boobs. <laughs> just just sucking them old titties. <laughs> I bet they're nice and supple from all the whatever. <laughs> the fucking French years of needing. Yeah, and here's he's not a cat. Evolves. All I'm saying is, if he married the chick that taught him high school, he was fucking her in high school, which makes her a pedophile. Yeah, yeah. Pedophilia. Didn't everybody have that in their funny. their high school? Everybody knew somebody who was uh, banging a teacher. I knew two teachers that were uh, fooling around with kids. I knew two teachers that were fooling around with each other. And I knew one of those teachers was also fooling around. Let's back up. Let's back up a second here. You're also from Florida, Adam. So we all know Florida is just notorious for insanity. (laughs) So it's almost expected. Florida is absolutely notorious. And even better, we have the best public record law. So when it happens, everybody sees your picture, your public (laughs) record. It's up on a website. Unless you're the uh, PBSO police, which for a while took down their entire website because they were posting all arrests except for those of police officers. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Man. You're pretty close to Broward County, aren't you, Adam? Yeah, I'm 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 within driving distance. I'm really close to Delray. Yeah, there's a lot of fuckery over there. <laughs> oh, dude, Broward, yeah. It, it's weird when I when I watch the news, I, I hate to draw the correlations to like the area, but you see like, you know, the Parkland shooting, you see um 9/11, all these like really big uh you see, you know, the all the election problems that we have every year. It's all in Palm Beach County. It's all in Broward. It's all in Delray. It's all in Palm Beach, Lantana. There's this weird little area where all these odd little conspiracies just in this part of Florida just kind of pop up. It's the devil's why. dodecahedron. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be. Yeah, dude, the freaking town I live in, the terrorists for 9-11 alleged, you know, people were training at Lantana Airport. You know, it's Doesn't like Florida oh, man live by there, too. Florida man, Florida, yes, Florida he, man lives very in everywhere. Popular. <laughs> I love Florida man memes. They're almost as good as moth memes. 
levels <laughs> nothing beats moth memes dude part of the problem too is we've got a, a raging drug problem oh yeah so it, uh, it's it's the perfect perfect mix well any good that? weed down there Oh yeah, you can get good stuff if you know the right people. Well, Absolutely, that's, that's I think it's that way. I think that's a, happened all over the country. Just with medical marijuana breaking out everywhere, there's so much that the dispensaries turn down for quality that there's still super high quality medical bud that's just you know. I don't know. I, got some. I need XYZ to find problem. somebody. Somebody, please sell me something good. Sell me something good. <laughs> 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 uh. Soon, soon it'll be legal everywhere. Sell me a sativa, yeah. It's uh, it's surprisingly legal in Florida if you got a card. There is, uh, I don't think you get flour anywhere, but there's places that sell vape liquid liquids everywhere. You can oh, get concentrates awesome. all over the place. That's I what I want. I used to be able to go to Craigslist, find someone, get it. You're done. But now it's like. Oh, creepy. That's so it's creepy sketchy. on Craigslist. Yeah, no, it's, it's so good if you sketchy. have a contact. Yeah. If you ever come to Florida, don't worry, Jerry. <laughs> I'm, I would come down there just to get some. See, that's what I've been fortunate about always working in uh, like grocery stores and shit. Is there's always there's always somebody you can find in the store that's selling. <laughs> there's always one person. <laughs> yeah, like some old guy like me comes up to you. Hey, you got any weed? <laughs> Yeah, it's instantly. not going to go over too well. No, red flags are getting raised. Like, what's exactly. this old dude? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. That, and you just don't want to be asking random people. That's why yeah. I'm just going to move. Yeah. Well, dude, with Michigan, <laughs> Michigan just legalizing. I'm thinking about just like taking the half hour move and just move up the over the border. Tennessee, Ten- I think Tennessee or Kentucky, one of those two. Yeah. Man, it's going to be forever. Yeah, just North, be careful North with those Carolina. border crosses. North Carolina is going to legalize. Oh, are they? Was it on a uh, ballot or? I think I think Asheville. I don't remember now. I wouldn't be surprised not to dive into politics, but coming up with the next election of Trump, if that isn't his quote unquote Trump card, that there's going to be a massive. It seems like all the cards would line up for having the big bad monster anti drug guy in there, get him out running, and just you know try to clean sweep the the nation just recreational legalization federally <laughs> that'd be pretty awesome it's or just full, happen. full decriminalization i mean yeah. it Trump's could not be done win. by a president Trump's not gonna it, win it would. well for uh, with sessions out of the way definitely can happen i don't know what Barr's stance if bar gets confirmed but i don't know what his stance is on Trump. could you imagine the backlash if a president even on their exit wrote that into law and then the next guy coming in tried to overturn that that would be a shit show yeah, well, yeah. first of all, they should just take it off their list and say, we don't care. It's not something we care about anymore. And then let the yeah. states deal with it because yeah. it's none of their business regulating that. It used to be the number one medicine for almost all, not, I mean, not almost all things, but from headache to muscle ache to, yeah. you know, so nausea. Yeah. 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 So, well, dude, so co- cocaine. Yeah. cocaine has a, an extreme amount of medical value. Even now, if you go into the medical profession, cocaine is used by doctors during surgery all the time especially oral surgery yeah and oh this is the thing that angers me about drugs what is the danger more people die right now from taking over-the-counter drugs oxycontins all that kind of over the counter painkillers than taking heroin injectables meth all the shit on the drug that's laced and you go what the hell when people are pumping and injecting dirty garbage laced who knows what the hell into their body that's safer than the pill you get from your doctor Man, yeah, but, cocaine's not that bad for you. It's no, bad for you when drugs you're are you're right, but drugs are illegal, so they could be controlled and profit for, profited from, regardless if it was on the white or black market. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. So that the, I don't. Know. And if, if if there's any truth to the whole thing about what's going on in Afghanistan and where all the opiates are coming from. And oh, how that's, that's getting where it is. I mean, the poppy fields, if we have troops guarding right, them. Right. If we've got the CIA or some other, DO, whatever, if the government is bringing that here and selling it on the black market, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, they've, I mean, we know that they did it in the past with, uh, with crack and cocaine and shit. 
in the inner mm-hmm. cities. Like Iran Contra. Yeah, Iran Contra. Like we know that's a thing that they do. So, and, and, it's and you no, can't it's push no back the past that they might be purposely doing dangerous things with those products, like fentanyl's coming in and blowing everybody out of the water because they're ODing because it's such yeah, high concentrate and they and, don't know it. And also, when all the heroin and all these painkillers and everything started getting huge, was the exact same time we went into Afghanistan. So it's like, mm-hmm. right, right, I right. Mean, Hey, it, you know, it probably fulfills some bullet point on the overall agenda of eugenics, you know, that's going on. If that's oh, it's probably a lot of bullet points. If you need money to fund X, Y, Z, drugs are the way. I mean, oh, yeah. it's the one it's un- way. Untraceable. Yeah, yeah that, that's well, why they're illegal. Money-wise. That's why, that's why they're illegal. So the fucking can fund the black budgets, the secret space program, Corey Goods missions. That's right, everybody. So go out and talk to your local heroin dealer, your Loki <laughs> Oxy guy, get some Roxy's, whatever your your thing is. We are going to save the earth one day by going into space. And we need to fund the Black Budget Project. You know, it only gets done through heroin, people. Come on. <laughs> that may be true because, you know, I heard what's her face, Catherine Austin Fitz talking about all this missing trillions, right? Missing mm-hmm. money. It's not missing. They got it. They got the money. They just haven't accounted for it. You know, people think that it's like written off. It's that they spent it on something, but they're not coming clean with, with right. It was budgeted from the habit. They spent it. They're just not going to tell you where they spent it. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, you know, to say that the secret space program was built on that. I doubt that. I doubt there is a secret space program. Yeah. What? What? I don't know. Dude, I, I don't think <laughs> space is real. <laughs> well, now if we take that if, they, if we take that effect, then yeah, there wouldn't be a secret space program. There would be a a, a, a secret not space program. I mean, it, okay, but it's it's real, but I don't think you can travel far. I don't think you can like get in a rocket and go to the moon, Elon. Unless the moon's really close. But whatever, that's just that's me. I'm weird, so don't mind me. Could be really <laughs> close. It could be really small and just really close. You know, the closer it is, the smaller. Oh, yeah, the, the smaller it is. Exactly. Who knows? Could be a projection. Right. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Diana and talking can... about projecting another sun or a moon to bright. Oh, yeah. Night. Yeah, they're going to have that. Or no, I don't even think they're projecting. Aren't they launching something in the sky? It's a satellite. There's a Chinese yeah. city that has invested like $30 million to light their city at night in which they're putting in a low orbit satellite, which is essentially a giant ball to reflect light over the city at night so they don't have to use street lights That's yes crazy yeah hey uh it's bad enough that we're fucking with the insects on a ground level let's do it from a sky level yeah, as let's well blast them with moonlight all the time oh dude like people don't even realize that the the change of insects through the world has been drastically affected by lights and their movement the size of animals the types their migrations or just all the nocturnal it's, animals yeah we are as well yeah <clears throat> yeah I don't know much about vampires, but I know well, they're, a thing. they're a thing. And then they travel by moonlight. And I'd just be it's, hanging out in that city all day long. I don't know a lot about that whole vampire stuff. Like, I mean, I know it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, but like, it's the it's ether. A thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. And it's going to be a thing over there. Yeah. Nocturnal. Nocturnal, nocturnal emissions. <laughs> yes. It's a thing. Constant. <laughs> oh, oh, man. It was a mistake. What were we just talking about? Artificial moons? Or something? So, no, we we're talking about this missing money and going to the secret space program. My larger point here was that it's a convenient scapegoat. It is. That is true. In much the same way that chemtrails are a convenient scapegoat for air pollution by planes. Mm. Let me... Well... <laughs> My favorite thing about, about uh, uh, planes and weather modification is they make clouds. You know, after nine yeah, eleven, yeah. the temperature dropped two degrees worldwide, or changed two degrees because of the change in cloud cover. Like that is the most extreme form of geoengineering we're doing on a daily level. And like it, it, people, uh, there's another thing I saw recently where if you take lightning strikes from outer space and look at them over the ocean, the lightning strikes happen much more often in shipping lanes. Because they're clear. Nobody knows why. But, I mean, that's weather being affected by 
you know, the, the shipping travel in the ocean. Hmm. Maybe they have a big battery they can charge. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Or something about the tension of them driving through the water changes the electrical tension of the surface surface of the water. I don't know. Ooh, that's a spicy meatball. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got any more news stories in there, Mr. Mr. James Cruz? Yeah, man. Uh, Oh, you got some stuff, looking, James? No, just, I mean, kind of. I mean, I just kind of going through. I mean, we. I didn't really have time to. Dude, this has been a weird, it. this has been weird without having Felix here doing the whole uh, breaking up, breaking up the show, you know, playing a, playing a jam. Uh-huh. Uh, you got used yeah. to a format. <clears throat> well, yeah. we've been talking a lot about <laughs> electricity and energy, and but uh, they. um Electric Universe? Amazon and Samsung are investing in a uh, release on, in 2020 of a Bluetooth chip that need that doesn't need a battery. It harvests energy from the air. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Internet of Things uh, like promises to connect billions of otherwise uh, uh, ordinary devices to the Internet, but when... It, each one, uh, you know, each one of these things needs its own battery. You know, how small can and cheap can they become? A new paper thin Bluetooth chip. It's um, able to entire operate entirely without a battery. Could be the problem solver. A postage size stamp chip from Willet is the name of the company. Is available to harvest energy from the am- ambient radio frequencies. Such uh, you know around us, such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular signals, and use those signals to power the Bluetooth-equipped ARM processor. Uh, yeah, and so these things are. Kinda, it's like a super efficient crystal radio, dude. It's like uh, yeah, it looks like a lo- like a little circuit pattern, you know, like on a piece of paper. That's all it is. And uh, uh, that's technically what RFID is when you have those systems. It sends out a radio frequency, it charges yeah. up the chip, and then it responds based on the energy in that frequency that it gets. Makes sense. <laughs> it could really make your, yeah. Uh, no, you, you can actually do this. If you have enough wire and you string it out, you can get enough of electrical charge to light things up around your house just based on your radio frequency. Because when those towers pump out, you know, you know, how many, you know, hundreds of thousands of kilowatts that is energy and power going into the air that you can reharness. Oh, you you were talking, here's another weird aspect. Another synchros involved with these little things. Uh, They says the the, will, it says that the Bluetooth chip combined with the lack of any battery means it can, you know, produce cheap, can be produced cheaply and mounted on almost anything. The company gives several potential use cases of the technology for example it can be edited embedded in consumer products to to provide easy access to a digital manual so you were talking about like on a on on a shirt or whatever like you could put these sensor these things on shirts and it would like it would tell your washing machine like wow what to run you know what what setting to put it at you know is this only possible with 5g because it's um it's a, that's an interesting fact too. <laughs> However, the fact that it can be combined with sensors raises more interesting possibilities. Um, uh, through a supply chain, temperature sensors could also report when items get too hot or too cold. Elsewhere, a pressure sensor could de- you know detect when a food container is empty or automatically order a replacement, thereby making your so-called smart fridge truly smart uh in yeah the yeah, the key aspect of it is it's 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 linked with amazon and, and samsung yeah 30 million dollar uh financing uh you know should be around that's by really what i want i want year. amazon to have a direct link to the tag in my yep, underwear yep, exactly <laughs> these are going to be everywhere man <laughs> these these are going to be blown up man they're going to be on everything yeah <laughs> Thirty million doesn't sound much to make these little things possible. I mean, you could be printing these things out like. Uh oh, Adam had another wet dream. Paper. Better add some more Tide Pods to his uh Tide his pods. order. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> oh, and uh, another another cool little tech thing, which is ridiculous, but Nike has these new self-lacing shoes that you use an app to do. Kind of, I remember a couple years ago they came out with those weird one-off versions of the Back to the Future ones with the that Marty had. You know, the, the self-lacing Nikes. Oh yeah, I remember. Yep, I remember yeah, they, they were selling those. They sold a few of them. They were like seven hundred bucks or something. But now they have a new one. It's called the Adapt uh, BB, like I guess basketball shoe. And uh, they have an app, and it, it's it just tightens up around your foot. It's a it's a laceless shoe. They're like three hundred fifty bucks. Which man. is battery goes dead. You can't take your shoes it's, off. You can't take my shoes off, man. Dude, they just need to bring pumps back. Pumps were awesome. Just t- 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 <laughs> the pumps were cool. Yeah, I remember Insta Pump. They had Insta Pump oh, for I never a minute. Had Insta Pump. They had these little CO two cartridges that you would like stick what? The, the top of the tongue. Yeah, it was like a. Um, yeah, it was like a whippet container, and uh, yeah, and it had like this this little. Oh, access. that's genius! They were selling whippets yeah. to kids as air pumps. <laughs> yes, yeah. Hey, mom, yeah, I gotta get these like, new shoes, man. I've been yeah. using them all day. <laughs> yeah, <good> guess. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading. I was just going over there. Some some comments about those chip things, and like some people are like, "Oh, it's super cool." And then the then like, but like the third one down. This is great for spy equipment. Uh, this is the end of privacy. Uh, I've always, I've always loved the idea of pulling power from radio waves since doing it with electronics, electronic kits as a child. Although you can only pull tiny amounts of power, we are now getting to the point where it can be useful. Batteries and low power devices really need to go far for the sensor market to take off. Yeah. Well, ARM has done a real good job on getting the efficiency of their chips down. So they've got them where they can run on small button batteries for long periods of time. But now, yeah, they're able to to start integrating this. Hmm. The problem is cooling, wouldn't it be? (laughs) Probably not. You'd probably just have to add in just more fins, more thermal. Yeah, thermal. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, these things are pretty pretty low wattage. They're. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any specs really on them, but I don't really. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a lot of places over in Sweden that are starting to use piezo power, where they'll take large uh, walkways and where people are constantly walking, they will have them compressing pieces, which will charge up plates, which will make electricity which hmm. is kind of interesting. And I've seen that where they then take the power used from that to like heat water and systems for use for building heating. You looked into much, um, scalar wave technology stuff. I've heard of it. What's that? <clears throat> Supposedly Tesla is working on it, but you can transmit it. A scalar wave is a longitudinal wave. So it's omnidirectional. It's like a torsion field. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, use torsion field physics. Yeah, it's the center of torsion physics. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I haven't read too much about it, but I find it pretty interesting. There's a couple experiments uh, on YouTube showing that you can transmit um, energy from one tower to another just as long as they have ground uh, together. Like Wardenclyffe style, right? Yeah. I, I think someone built uh, a tower that's similar to that in Texas. I've seen it on there. Well, wasn't that supposedly the original Tesla tower was doing that, exchanging energy between the upper atmosphere and the... Yeah, Wardenclyffe is just a giant Tesla tower. But no, it's using the Earth, though. It's it's sending electricity through the Earth to the other tower. It's not going through the air, which is a problem. That's why we can't use it today. The power that we we consume... would destroy the earth yeah it would just fry the earth just these huge bolts no i wonder if that would interfere because we ground all of our electricity right now into the ground so everything we're producing is maybe would get backfed by a system like that well it depends on what's actually happening with the ground yeah what's really transpiring with what what is what is really going on? Yeah, there? yeah. When you said ground, I was thinking more like an actual ground, like electrical ground. But yeah, you know. I was too. And I, I like what is really happening. Why why do you have to ground that? It just it's you know if electricity is a resonance signal, 
of some kind of frequency, then all of the looping and whatever circuits and all that crap isn't really necessary. It's just done because that's the way they, you know, figured out how to harness the power of it. Hmm. Oh yeah. Nobody knows how electricity works. That's the, that's the beauty of it. We think we know we have some ideas hasn't been proven yet, but we still use it every day for all of our science. We rely on it. Mm -hmm. If electricity went out for a month, we'd We'd be be in the stone age. Yeah. It'd be mad. It'd be Mad Max world. It would be mad Jerry Cthulhu world. (laughs) (laughs) Man. Let's see. So have you uh, created any Faraday cages over there, Jerry, for you to protect in case of some sort of system attack? The uh, the drawer next to my bed is one, one closed, and I keep my phone and shit in there. Nice. Oh, nice. helpful advice for anybody out there in case for some reason you saw in the news there was going to be an immediate EMP attack. <laughs> Unplug your microwave and throw your stuff in it. <laughs> Oh, that's not being serious. It's a Faraday cage. Or don't worry about it because EMPs are fake. Oh, I don't even mean EMPs necessarily. I'd be talking like a large coronal outburst from the sun that would have in it a giant massive EMP. Mm -hmm. Uh, Carrington flare style. That's not EMP. That's more of an extinction level event. Well, no, like uh, the Carrington um, event where there was, you know, just enough that it would blow out 80% of the electronics on the earth. Wasn't it like... The twenty. It was a. It was over a hundred years ago. Yeah. It was before there was real technology. The only technology that was affected by it was uh, barbed wire fences and uh, uh, what, what's uh, telegraphs. Telegraphs where there was so much power put into the telegraphs that even though the systems went down, they were Wait, still transmitting. What happened? Because the, they were being what happened to by the, the barbed atmosphere. wire fences? Oh, they were arcing. And, uh, there was so much. Like the idea that you would do where you could take um, and create a little crystal radio, like those little piezo things, there was so much charged energy in the air across like an electrical line, this wire that was running across that they were getting arcs and sparks. Same thing along railroad ties, Dude, that long would, runs of railroad that tracks would, with sparking so railroad tracks. That's a buildup of static electricity. Which Not static. It's the the charge of electricity. Coming, you, you know, like uh, the Aurora Borealis, take that. To the point where when it happened, like the night sky all the way down in Florida was visible at night. You're talking like massive amounts of charged particles in the atmosphere. That could happen soon if the, if the poles keep shifting. Man. Yeah, it's going to happen. Dude, we all walk around with uh, a cell phone in our pocket. Those things are going to fry and we're all going <laughs> to still just going to blow up. Dude, if the poles shift, forget about that. You're going to have so much charged ionizing radiation from the atmosphere that isn't being blocked by the natural magnetic field of the earth. That for you're, you're going to be getting of Yeah, like the whole surface of the planet would be be unlivable. It would be a microwave. You would have to get below surface to survive. Maybe. Unless you're like Jerry and you got some super DNA that No, maybe so. maybe it's not what they think it is. I don't know. I don't know. Dude, I don't know what it is. Well, we'll worry. find out. It's crazy. It's like worrying about a black hole eating the earth. Oh. For all we know, we could have been getting eaten by a black hole right now by a giant one that's just getting sucked <laughs> in. And we're just we could have got even... sucked into one in 2012. Yeah, we're not did even aware of it. Did you listen? Oh, my God. I forgot to tell you this. If you Have you listened to the THC with SMQ? Oh, with Smokey? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I heard it. Did you hear... Greg Carwood say smoky something, smoky something right before he, he introduced him. No, no, I didn't, but that's great. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even pick that up. It's, 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 it's like the last sentence of his introduction. Smoky. He, he says, oh. no, but he didn't call him smoky. He said right. either he was from smoky San Diego or in oh. something, something like that. It was something like that. I just thought it was, I wonder if he knows that we, did that that'd be great if he did but i, I highly doubt it <laughs> uh, you never you know never what know. he listened we were yeah. on the few podcasts who had him on you rather mm-hmm. that's true i'll have him on again guy's awesome oh yeah totally <laughs> you heard yeah. it first cruising with steak is an interview show again uh, maybe <laughs> They feel yeah, like it. just, it's a hangout show, man. Just chilling. I don't just, know. Just chilling. 
hanging out. Interview show is it's the new hive. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. <laughs> Basically, I told you I was watching Arrow, right? Yes. Uh, the new evil villain group is called Hive with dots H dot I dot B dot. Oh, they has dots. They are actually. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> Man. I've been finding all these correlations of things that I've done that I'm finding like copies of. Like when I changed my name to, Jer- to Jerry Cthulhu on YouTube, I just found this guy named Michael Cthulhu mm. <laughs> on YouTube. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. I never yes. saw him before. You see uh, AI link- linking your synchronicities. Hey, you, oh, you want to you see some creepy. This is something I just found too the other day on YouTube. Oh, man. It's getting good. So it's a podcast. I think it's a podcast called. Where do you see this? Hello, everyone. Called Night Mind. Oh, it's the it's the oh, English. Wow! It's the, and look at the NM. I, I, I know. know. I know. Uh, what? I know. It's, yeah, it's just kind of crazy. Hundreds monkey thing or a copy cat. I don't know. I don't know. Look at it's all the subs- weird. look at all the subscribers they have. I know. You stole it from the Akashic what Record, the Jerry. You're a thief. Yeah, man. I didn't really steal it. They don't. They're not. They do like horror stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Wow. Max Mente. Who you got on tomorrow night, Jerry? Um, a guy named Devin Maggi. His YouTube channel is called Flat Earth Paradise. Oh, you got a flat Let's earther coming on? I wanted to have someone on. Dude, there. Uh, uh, I don't know out. if he's actually a flat earther or not. Well, if he is, feel him out, Jerry, because I would love yeah. to have a flat earther on this round table. <laughs> Just oh, to explain it awesome. to us. You should get um get Jaron Campanella. I don't know who that um, is. Not I don't, yeah, I don't I'm not know. sure. His YouTube channel is called Jaronism. Oh, he's uh, I think probably one just... of the most rational people that you can actually talk to and debate. Who doesn't oh, yeah, get all I mean, up in your face? I, just, I don't even need a debate. I just want. Yeah, exactly. Hear... I don't want to debate. I yeah, just want I somebody just, to lay it out for me. Like, put it out there, man. Think of Eric Dubé. The, yes, <laughs> and then everyone will hate you. I don't man, know anyone you pick. There's dude, uh, the community so divided. And I'm not part of this community, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> It's so divided and, and splintered in faction that it, whoever you invite, some other people in the flat earth community will troll you for using, <laughs> for, you know, having that, you know what I'm oh, saying? Of course. Yeah. How can yeah. you have him on? He's a, you know, whatever. Uh, you should get, I know, I know who you should get. I know who will come on. Patricia Steer. Okay. She'd be really good. And she's cute. There we go. Patricia Steer. Sounds like S-T-E-R-E. I'm becoming a flat earth. Did you guys happen to catch Shermer on Joe Rogan again? No, I didn't listen to that one. Fuck. It was a good one, actually. It, I mean, it was I, good. I, I ended up enjoying it after the first, like, 20 minutes of me wanting to rip my hair out. And yeah, it did. I was, yeah, you're you're spot on because the first 20 minutes, you're like, oh, my God, shut up. And then he then they got into some pretty decent conversation. The, the JFK shit was pretty cool. Like, there's some decent stuff, but it's just like, oh, my God, dude, every single topic it's just like and then but rogan stood his ground on the couple of things he's still into you know but the couple a, things yeah Shermer about it yeah it's just like wow i'm just waiting for him to have kanye uh, west on oh I, I yeah, that would be, for that. that would be fun interview to listen to yeah, it's, it, well it's happening he agreed to it oh it's he going, did yeah dude it's going down kanye excellent. west it's gonna be on joe rogan excellent who's that Kanye. Kanye. They oh yeah, that's right. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be Doesn't he do the Yeezys? I don't know. Young Jamie's gonna jerk off the whole time though. He's in love. He's with having Kanye. another baby with what's her face? Sounds about Kardashian? right. Kardashian? Yeah. They're having a fourth kid. Oh Jesus. Oh, that's gonna be an empire. Four kids. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. Boom, there we go. <sighs> the let's four the, let's, fours, man. Let's let's get that conspiracy. See, theory they have going. North. I know one of their kids' name is North. That sounds well, right? Northwest. Yeah. Yeah. I like People, that. Right. Yeah. It's now they can get a whole set north, south, east, and east west. west. Yeah. West, west. <laughs> I feel be- I feel sorry for that kid with a double name. He'd be called West, west. 
West to the West to the Power Two. Probably named. If I Donald. had him, I would I would have him. His middle name. <laughs> My <laughs> name is Mario. Donald. <laughs> I'm West, West Anthony. I'm West Squared. <laughs> West Squared. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I, I I might I might save this article. This is actually a pretty cool article. It's like the history of blood, like the explains the mysteries of blood. It's like this whole cult, like they wish they knew. Well, it's just you know, it's like for instance, uh, nineteen in nineteen thirty eight, just before World War Two broke out, the city of London. The population of nine million only had eight pints of blood in storage. Yeah, that's insane. Considering that the human body contains nine pints, <laughs> man, some low blood count. Is everybody here familiar with the scam that giving blood is? Well, th- th- that's what I mean. Well, like, there's it g- goes to vampires. I, th- right? I think I want to do a whole little thing on this. This is pretty dope, dude. There's a lot of crazy shit in here. I refuse to give blood once I found out that it is <laughs> sold and resold and yes. resold. And it's this market of when they're giving you a ticket, they don't give a fuck about the blood. They're just trying to do everything they can to buy it and resell it. It's the most disgusting market on the planet. Plus, yeah, it's a crazy. precious bodily fluid. Why would you part well, with that, it? Right. Well, that was the beginning ideas of blood. You know, if you saw blood, you were like, like if a person saw somebody like you know with blood on them like you were dead like that person was gonna die you know it was before the bloodletting you know like the taking of blood you know yeah it meant death basically <laughs> every month every woman must die oh there's, my there's God. some validity to that the mm-hmm. idea of bloodletting yeah but only for certain things <laughs> uh, there's one big proof and it's in, I want to say it's gastric bypass surgery and certain types of liposuction for diabetes. Mm-hmm. They recommend it for people that are severely obese for their diabetic problem only because they've seen a correlation between these surgeries. And I've heard some doctors, I forget who uh, talk about this in the past in some holistic podcasts that basically say the reason is because of the blood loss, that extreme amount of blood loss in certain people can induce certain types of um, anti-diabetic effects. Right. Yeah. Resensitize your insulin or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, It's, it's it's massive amounts of trauma and loss of blood within your body. It's also good for women with high iron contents or, or men even to give blood regularly, (laughs) the iron in your blood. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Here's one funny quote. It's like, uh, uh, there's, there's a book. It's, being referred to here it's called nine pints a journey through money medicine and mysteries of blood so uh but the book takes you through um the culture of using blood as well as scientific advances and endearing taboos so if you think about it it's extraordinary that people give a living tissue out of their own body for a stranger uh the author says the less extraordinary is the dichotomy of of good and bad blood and the way that blood in most common and most medical contexts is seen as a, as an absolutely unquestioned good, but measure, but menstrual blood, blood leads to taboos that can deprive girls of their education. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Uh, there's are, those are weird taboos. <laughs> Weird some, taboos, indeed. Bloodletting. Like the one it. thing I, 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 I find interesting about some blood, research on blood. My mom swears that her political affiliation changed after she had a, a massive blood transfusion. Oh no way! <laughs> and but I, I've wondered about this because you have a lot of research in organs, organ donors having cravings and things that are linked to previous donors that were unregistered or they didn't know who they were until they contacted their families later on. There's a lot of research on that. And so why wouldn't blood also be something that could transfer knowledge? A little frightening though, because you're going to put somebody else inside of you. Well, they can take out large portions of the brain and your memory is still there, right? So that some people think that memory is a field effect. 
There are people Ooh. who have had spinal fluid injuries where there's spinal fluid flowing into their brain and eroding it, where they've had like 80 or 90% of the matter inside of their brain decayed. And only at that point were they starting to show cognitive effects, which even drove them to the doctor, which, yeah, it, it flips on its head the understanding of what the brain does. Plus, you're taking in someone else's DNA. And if DNA truly can store information, it's very possible that parts of the person that it came from are stored there. There so. is an interesting thing to show that there is uh, DNA transfer between a mother and child through the embryonic fluid and that some of the cells that are going into your body are literally your mother's cells, your mother's living body incorporating into you. And, you know, depending on how long these cells can last and persist, I mean, this essentially means that your oh, ancient my. ancestors, your grandmother, your, these people are within you, that DNA and cells mm. can persist. And so, yeah, it's, it's weird to think that you're just going to pick some random stranger and mainline just a large portion of their code into you. Crazy. Well, it's the, you gotta, I, the way I think about DNA memory is more like, um, it's a record of the physical body mm -hmm. of that person right it's quantumly entangled with some other experience and, and it's that quantumly entangled, entangled with the consciousness of consciousness you know, yes yeah, which is in the ether yes of course it gets really deep if you start to think about the idea that you know if there was some sort of central event or starting or what if all particles are connected and attached then you know the whole idea of consciousness and quantum entanglement really opens up because everything Attaches to everything. Everything. The, is every particle up. is quantumly entangled with every art of every other particle. That's. Yeah, I, think, I think that's probably true, and it's yeah. a thickness and degree. And the more, the it's, more and, thickly, like if you travel down a road more and more, you walk down a path, it gets you know trodden down and thicker and easy to travel. I think the same thing is kind of quantum entanglement that you get these paths, like you know neural pathways, they become easier and easier over time. It's even easier than that. If ever, if all matter is quantumly entangled at the Big Bang, when the first two thing, when that first singularity split, those were quantumly entangled. So everything produced from those two, yep, are quantumly entangled. Yeah, so in that ever, model of the universe, it's it's an extremely interesting model. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I just got a uh, uh, Adam Tarsus just messaged me. He's listening live. Oh, and, he's, and he says the reason that they knock out people receiving blood transfusions is because they can experience powerful changes in personality, which is disturbing to both the patient and the family. So what the fuck? exactly. So yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, getting other people's uh, blood. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. So yeah. You you'd rather just wake up a different person than watch the change happen. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess yeah. hey, uh, it depends if you wake up a superhero or supervillain. I had you a, find uh, out you got uh, Dick Cheney's blood. There's Bush out there somewhere. He's secretly putting all of his blood into some sort of transfusion system to you're like. Se you're secretly craving young children. Oh, dude, dude, wouldn't that be crazy? Like Gandhi, like fuck the entire planet into existence, but there's some guy that's in the middle of the blood donation system with some cloning thing, and he's gonna like all of a sudden take over the entire world in like 40 years through his DNA. There was a really good book that was sort of like that called The Boys from Brazil. It was by uh, Ira Levin. And this, I think it was Joseph Mengele had escaped Nazi Germany, went to South America with he some did. Hitler's uh, <laughs> DNA and was cloning children in test tubes, Hitler, clones of Hitler. And he had, a, had them all over the world. You know, one of, oh. one of the, how I forgot how many they had, probably, you know, 39, 30, some Masonic number, I'm sure. <laughs> there was 93 of them scattered all over the earth. It's, it's a good book. Hitler clones. Oh, I got a message for Adam Tarsus, by the way. Remember that podcast you were going to start called Smashing Adams? Smashing Adams. Yes. <laughs> Put that out there for you, dude. I still like Felix. I would love to start a new podcast just so I could call it what Felix came up with, which was called Airplane Mode. Airplane, Airplane Mode. mode. Yes. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, well, guys. Well, it was fun. Yeah, man. This was a this is a good time. Ready? Yeah, this is this was a, this one flew by. Had some good good conversation flowing there. We need a three hour show. No, we don't. Uh, oh, man, show. I have to I have to do I really have to do a lot more research. We could for that. we could resurrect Hive. We could do a Hive <laughs> this Saturday. I'm in if anybody else is. So we'll see. Just we'll throwing see. it out there. But uh, oh, uh, for this weekend. 
Yeah. We'll I'll see. be around. We'll see. All right. All, all I'm doing is fishing for legendary fish. So maybe okay. hopefully something crazy will happen and we can build a hive around it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we'll look for. Something. So everyone, you know, pray. Next week, the hive will take place inside of Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That would be just, excellent. Just, just everyone, go we'll get a, a PS4. We could all do we'll a let's play. We'll, yeah. We'll do, we'll do let's plays like PewDiePie while yes. James plays uh, video yeah, games. We'll all just hang out and talk crazy shit. And, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. That would be fun. So yeah, and if anyone wants it. information on Paramania, it's going to be in Roswell, Georgia on April. What day was it? I don't know. Four, you, fourth and fifth. April 4th and 5th. How there much are go. tickets? That's not far from me. I think it's just kind of show up. Thing. That's where Joshua Cutchin lives. Yeah. Fourth, fifth, fourth through the seventh. It's Thursday through Sunday. Oh, yeah. Randall Carson's coming too. Jesus. Oh, yeah. It sounds like a good time. I don't think they haven't come up with ticket prices yet. Yeah, I can drive to that one. Oh man, yeah. might have to. Hmm. Yeah, I think that. I, think I that was thinking, uh, Jess and I were talking about maybe doing Cryptid Con this year. Do it. Oh, yeah. I'm well, if you're going gonna to pick that. one or the other, I got to choose one of these. I don't think I can. I can go to both. All these, I got a couple man. extra vacation days this year. So uh, uh, it's on a week. They're both on weekends. What do you mean you can't go? I mean. Maybe, but well, James goes on like forty-five <laughs> vacations a year anyway with his family, so he's, he's just got to squeeze <laughs> it in. No, but he I works just, for himself. Uh, he doesn't have a boss, pretty much. But uh oh, Micah Hanks is going to be there too, apparently. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. yeah. See, I think I'm like, oh man, Paramedia I'd go just for Micah. Like, I don't know. I might be able to try to pull two sounds off. Like it was really hard to do two of them last year, uh, mainly because they were pretty close to each other and i had a that freaking fishing trip like smack in between so it was yeah. like three <laughs> three trips. three trips in a row then you had like, like, you had like a couple a couple yeah. poor poor james yeah. a couple no it was just, fishing uh, trip interfered Niagara, with yeah. his cryptid con vacation no way just being away Falls trip. From my, my house yeah uh, well yeah. yeah so thanks for listening guys uh subscribe to cat in the box check it out adam thanks for joining us Oh, thank you very much. Um, buy some uh, armor and and blacksmithing stuff from Crypto Mystic down there. Thanks for joining us, Crypto. I'll send nice, you guys. Some. Yeah, nice Ooh. meeting you, man. That oh, dude, that'd be awesome. And uh, you know, Grim State's gonna get some iron underwear. Yeah, of course, Knox Mente. Can we get like a, a CWS cattle prod? That'd be awesome. Dude, that'd be great, dude. I'll brand <laughs> my I'll brand myself. With a, I'll, yeah. I'm learning how to make yeah. dice cups on my lathe. So I'm going to make nice. some wooden dice cups. And I was hope, hoping that Watcher could maybe wrap some iron around them or do something, oh, something funky like that. We could do cruising with steak dice cups. Oh, shout out man. to that guy. Oh, I know he's hanging man. out. And uh, I wanted to. Um, he's I, going I, down I, to Mar- Mar- Mexico on something. He's going to. Oh, oh, we could have a dice cup off. We could have the iron wood versus the 3D <laughs> printed <laughs> dice cup. There you go. And, and what would be yeah. the grounds for the competition or you know the rules <sighs> coolest cup wins oh cool just cool <laughs> just coolest factor okay coolest cup mm. <sighs> i'll uh, show you how to make a von lichtenberg burner they're fucking awesome you can get uh really cool patterns in wood looks like electricity flow. oh yeah yep yeah, yeah but yeah. i've still pretty easy to make oh, i think yeah, super easy I don't, I don't like those patterns though. No. I don't know. I don't know. I would have to play with it. I got to master, you know, all my other tools first. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Get yourself a blowtorch and uh, got one. The yeah. only thing I don't have right now is a jointer and a table saw. Mm. So, yeah, subscribe to uh, all that stuff. And, uh, bitches. Subscribe, bitches. <laughs> and thanks, thanks for listening, guys. Here's yeah. Support Nice yeah. Mente. Get uh, Jerry a biscuit cutter. There we go. Make sure you cut it. I don't the biscuit cutter. Now. Biscuits are for pussies. <laughs> and I now. Make them. I'm kidding. Um, if you want to support us, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can get to a thousand subs so Ooh, we can get monetize. It. Get it. That'd be cool. Nice. That's, so, that's uh, only, oh my God, Adam. Yeah. No, I'm right at the end. Yeah, no, oh this, this, this is. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> right this is, at the end. We'll so go thanks. over time. So thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> Thank you.
thoughts left to express? Or is everything a reference to a reference to a reference in our collective unconscious? To claim originality is nonsense, but we can still think, speak, listen, and laugh. Don't be careless of this fact and don't let anyone rob you of that. Oh! No one will rob you of that. That's sound advice, right? Here's some more from Mother Dearest. Stop and smell the roses. Be careful of the thorns. But you knew that, right? I measure my pleasure and pain in overall amount of balance. And I'm grateful for that. All my peoples, as a matter of fact And much props to moms and pops especially For they put the breath in me and a good head on my shoulders Now I'm older And the question of eternity burns in me Cause I want so bad for there to be a place for loved ones to go When their days left on this earth goes to zero I'll forget my worldly worries and fly away in a dream. I'll be back.